Hello everybody! Hope you're all doing well. I am back in the studio and before me I have many, many, many tech things. It's going to be a wonderful day. Uh, so, I uh, hope you're all doing well. Uh, th this stream is going to be a three-part stream. All computers, all tech. And so, the first thing we're going to do is take the old studio PC and we're going to take that out of this rack case and we're going to put some nice new uh, capture cards and things in that and install that in a case and put that over on the left hand side just off this camera here is where the new streaming setup's going to be and secondly we're going to build the new computer with the yes that is if uh, Liam is on uh, camera too this evening Say hello. Hello. Yeah. So you see those those four screens there. That's going to be the new live streaming setup. If you can hear some noise in the background, that's because tonight's live stream is brought to you from my laptop. <laughs> my laptop is currently screaming in agony uh, because it's uh, yes. Um. It's not really designed to do uh, a long live stream, but it's powerful enough, so it's going to be fine. Uh, second thing is we're going to use this little bad boy. This is the Ryzen 9 R9, or R9 3900XT. Lovely, simple name. Uh, and talk a bit more about it. Of course, anything that comes up in chat, I have a copy of the chat in front of me, so any questions that you have, uh, I'll try my best to answer them. And then the third part of the stream, once that's built, is I'm going to get that turned on. Uh, install Windows while we have a bit of a chat and a bit of a drink. Uh, then go ahead and start tweaking things like Infinity Fabric timing and RAM timing and all that clever stuff. And also, uh, Liam will be joining me in uh, having a lovely Old Fashioned. As you may be able to see behind me, I have the Angostura Bitters and the Woodford Reserve Bourbon. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. I did say I wasn't going to drink, but then I saw that. Yeah. So, yes, it's going to be quite the the evening. But yeah, it. so uh, Nico said, uh, yeah, but how did, much did it cost in the I The answer is lots. Um, more than I would like to spend on anything ever, really. But for me, this is... A business expense because sometimes if I'm running mixes it's a 96 kilohertz if you need another port there's there's a hub in on the second shelf if there's no space there it's fine. Hmm? It's fine. okay is it just for power yeah, yeah. Uh, there's actually two power proper powers on that power strip sweet yeah yeah I try and prepare for everything <laughs> um, yeah, um, at 96 kilohertz, which I don't often use, but when I do, a full mix is starting to drop out at lower latencies, which this is an Intel 6700, uh, not the K model. It was the kind of less power, and it was a, it is a silent build. So the first thing I'm going to do before I take this apart is I am going to crack a beer. <coughs> And this, for anybody who's not seen this, is Boddington's, which, if you've ever watched too many episodes of Friends, you will have heard the name bandied around. This is the, what was formerly, the cream of Manchester. So, cheers. And this stuff is weird. You kind of pour it in one, and it will make itself a nice head. <laughs> Proceeds to spill it all over the computer. Well done. Yeah, well done, idiot. Good start. And that's one of the reasons why I have a microfiber cloth. <laughs> For beer. Yeah, one of, one of many reasons. This microfiber cloth's probably been covered in beer before from studio clients. Um, usually not me, but oops. Anyway, uh, I'm testing out a new microphone today as well for anyone who's interested being a studio PC build. This is the Jay-Z Microphones Black Hole, the BH2. So I'm going to see how this thing sounds. I'm 18 inches, 24 inches away from it. So we'll see how it handles that. It's obviously not a shotgun microphone. Uh, 
it's a uh, it's a nice kind of large diaphragm condenser, and of course trying to see a black microphone. <laughs> it's uh, it's rather nice. If I get a little closer, it sounds kind of like this. It's a very nice microphone, but I just thought I'd try something a little different today. So let's uh, begin while the beer settles. Okay. So <laughs> hi. Let's get the uh, the nice screwdrivers out. And firstly, I'm going to remove... Oh, this desk stinks of beer now. Um, I'm going to remove uh, my RME HDSPE Radat, which, when I first started this YouTube channel, roughly five years ago now, and that happened really quickly, um, I built this uh, PC as one of my very first videos. And a oh, set of videos, if you will. Goodbye. Um, <laughs> this has been added to and changed over the years. It didn't have this, which is a 1050 Ti, a silent one. Um, I don't think it even had the uh, the radar in at first. But there we go. If I pull this out now, it's an absolute monster of a card because it's got the time code edition, which means that. It's uh, it's a 36 in 36 out interface that also has uh, two word clock outs and is incredibly stable. So I'm going to put that over to the side for now. On my, my side where I have many, many things. And I'm just going to disassemble this piece by piece. I've already... Uh, Taking the screw out. This this is the 1050 Ti that has absolutely no fans on at all. Uh, I always try and aim for either a silent uh, PC or at least as close to that as possible. And I think with this new build, it's going to be close as possible rather than actually silent. But as long as we can get pretty close, I'll be happy. Uh, and last but not least, this is an Ava Media capture card. And that is going to be augmented with this uh, Blackmagic Mini Recorder 4K. So what I'm thinking is that this little beastie is going to be for the main camera, uh, which means that if I'm doing any offline stuff, I can use it in 4K mode and capture 4K. But then I've also got the option of using that then for the main camera, use this one for a secondary camera. And I've got some of those little cheap HDMI capture card USB things as well, which uh, we're actually using one right now. Uh, uh, the camera that Liam is operating is using one of those. Ooh, there's one down there as well, isn't there? Uh, yeah, yeah, more than likely. There's three of them. They're on, the, on the sofa. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they are. Oh, yeah. Uh, please excuse the mess. I am in the middle of changing everything Sorry, in this. I'm out the mess. <laughs> and, that's, and this is how we're streaming the, live cam the main camera. Yeah. An iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the wide cam is is an iPhone, would you believe? But it it does a job and it does it well. So we have all that out and let's take all the cables out. This this computer's probably going to see more work CPU wise than it ever has done. Because unless you're doing a really heavy mix, um audio software isn't necessarily that demanding. Except for when it is. <laughs> when it's demanding, you need that horsepower there. It's a bit bit of an oddball. But if it's going to be doing video live streaming and capture, it's probably going to be pretty heavy due to use. So why did you go for the AMD again? Go um, for Intel? Good question. Mostly price to performance. This is a 12-core monster, and it costs £500. So... What is it equivalent to? A 9.9? i7? 9 series, 10 series? We're definitely in the, the i9 category. Like, but most recent, like 10 series? Nine. Yeah, th this is pretty much, for what I'm doing, this is at least on par with a 10.900, which is, you know, like, mm -hmm. for, for Intel's world, if you want to get matching this, you're looking at their high-end desktop line, which is, you know, suddenly the prices jump. So and what do you reckon you'd be looking at, equivalent? 
Greta will constrain. I'd have more to, than that. I'd have to look, but it's definitely a, quite a bit more. Uh, I mean, a lot of people say, oh, Intel's the best and AMD sucks. and you know, Every 10 years, that's not true anymore. Pretty much. <laughs> that is the long and short of it. Now, Intel do still make some good chips, and I considered it, but they, they can make things so much more expensive. I mean, so much more expensive. And they generate a lot more heat, comparatively. Intel is still stuck on the uh, the ten no, the fourteen nanometer process. In fact, uh, which for anyone who's not particularly techy means that Intel's parts are all bigger, which means they generate more heat. More uh, heat. I nine ten nine hundred K. Yep, that's roughly. Is that the uh, eight core one, ten core one, ten core? I think that is. Uh, this is a hardware bundle, so it's not the right thing. Okay. On eBay, they're 530. I don't know whether it's, as you say, how many cores it is. Yeah, I think the 10900K is a 10 core. I mean, the number of cores alone isn't the be all and end all, but it was for the longest time. Yeah, rock and roll in chat says the 3900XT will keep up with the 14 core. 1940 XT. 1940? Yeah, which is the high-end desktop stuff. And that's the thing to keep in mind here is we're not gamers. We're, wow. we're, we're, well, well, Liam is, but... Th this isn't for gaming. This, thank you. Th yeah. This, this is not for gaming, yes. Um, the intention, I mean, if I wanted to play games on this, I could. And it would happily do so. Uh, and because I'm weird and I like 60 hertz refresh monitors, uh, it genuinely wouldn't matter to me whether it could do 100 or 200 frames a second. Um, I also don't have fast enough reactions for that to even matter in anything like Counter-Strike. Because um, I can't even click on the person, let alone do it fast enough. <laughs> There's a reason why I prefer turn-based games. Um, but yeah, that aside... 800, uh, 820 quid. Yeah, so it's 820 quid for the processor alone and the motherboards for the high-end desktop stuff are expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's one thing. And they'll kick out significant heat as well. The Intel stuff is, like, mm -hmm. hot. And for an audio producer, that's, that's important because I sit in the same room as this thing. Oh, that tick, tick, tick is the... Uh, that's the screw in the tray. That's probably fine. AMD supports PCI Express 4? It does indeed. What's that? Um, I know what PCI Express is, but okay. what's the 4? Right, so the newer generations can go faster. So from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4, the same number of, you'll have heard like X4, X8, X16, all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, PCI Express 4 is twice as fast as the generation we were previously on. So Are they doing hard drives that plug into that yet? Uh, there's a couple, yeah. Like super fast. Like, like five or six gigabytes a second Jesus. per drive, yeah. But you're paying through the nose for it, and I like fast, I really like fast, but there's a reasonable limit for... For audio, I guess, as well. Right? Yeah, and it becomes... Like 8K video, maybe, but yeah. 3D or, or process like, it, 3D rendering. If, you, if you've got a server and you do... You know, like databases, that kind of thing, with like crazy big databases for someone like Facebook, they need that kind of stuff. And for oh, yeah. them, hmm? yeah, I said yeah, yeah, stuff, stuff like that. It makes perfect sense, but for for what we're doing, it's what do you call it? Price to performance. It's on that that curve where it, it's above the ideal price to performance. If I wanted to go absolutely crazy and buy that stuff, I mean, I absolutely could, but I wouldn't really see any appreciable benefit. I wish I brought the stream deck down there. Yeah. Well, you can you can change uh, you can change cameras on your phone uh, through a web browser without an app. Right. Yeah. You just get the IP address for that machine and just search OBS remote. Uh, sorry, guys, you can't do it at home. You can't mess around with the camera, thankfully. Well, they could. <laughs> if I open up the port. And somehow network address translated it. Huh. Maybe. 
Yeah, well, if you if you set up a, uh, a service on the router to that port, and um, it's a unique port, then when they go to our static IP address at that port, it'll take it to your computer. If we do the port forwarding. Yeah, if we did the port forwarding, yeah. But that that's still slightly terrifying to think. I say I've been setting up those NAS boxes. So I've now got 24 terabytes of synchronous storage that can be accessed from anywhere in the world, like Dropbox. It syncs from one drive to the other. Pain in the ass set up, but it's cool. Yeah, slightly terrifying. Got, got one more screw in here that needs some lateral. There we go. Let's watch him break it. Sorry, um, that wasn't the prettiest thing on camera that I had to just use a little bit of leverage here just because the screw was, was catching, just to pull it. But now, to lift out the old king. The king is dead, long live the king. I notice you're not wearing an anti-static wristband. Aren't you going to fry yourself and destroy all of the computing components? Dun, dun, dun. Nah. <laughs> um, components are a lot more... Uh, uh, durable when it comes to a, a static discharge than they ever used I to I remember be. the first time I ever worked on a computer I was terrified of static yeah I was like because I, I was like what like 10 or something when me and my dad first built a computer together <laughs> and we were just like oh no first make sure we touch the side of everything that can't be static to be fair when you were 10 that was probably quite a real issue alright yeah um, computers have become a lot more hardy and components have been designed to be a lot less sensitive to ah. static over the years uh, back in the 386, 486 days, you could actually fry a chip. Mm. Although you would have to be doing the, the classic thing of like rubbing your feet on the carpet till your hair stood up and then going... Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, what you'll casually see me do every now and again... Mm. Um, Rock and Roll says he saw you build this PC two years ago. Must have been further, must have been further back. Oh, you might have seen the video two years ago, but it yeah. must have been further back than that when I did this. Because uh, I, I did this at the, in the Skylake era. Uh, but yeah, um, you'll see me. It's it's like when I hit the save button in Reaper, which I do all the time. I will keep leaning back and touching my BBC preamps because I know the chassis are grounded. Which means that it resets my grounding every now and again. Just in case. Just in case I'm just discharging any potential static. Not that I think there is any, but safety first. Mm -hmm. But you don't need a like anti-static wristband constantly attached to something. This isn't a clean room. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, as I was saying, um, you might have seen me doing some work on the computer because I've had this for a while, but I definitely didn't live stream this build. <laughs> I didn't have any of that kind of technology at the time. But this cooler is massive, but you may notice there are no fans on it at all. Uh, it's entirely passive. So, I'm going to put this case away for now. This is also going to be the case for the new machine because this case slides very conveniently into the rack space on the bottom of the console behind me. Having said that, oh boy, it's heavy. Oh, beer time. Cheers, mm -hmm. everybody. Oh, yes. Uh, having said that, here's one I made earlier. So, we're going to put this into the fractal design Meshify C. Because it has a lot of airflow. And one of the reasons that I picked this high airflow was because the computer... Uh, build will have a couple of case fans in, but it's not going to have CPU fans. So the airflow from the these Noctua fans that I have got, which are the, uh, it says on the box, NFS12A, these are going to go in the front of the case. I believe the Fractal has a fan in the back. And so that means that there's going to be a nice airflow moving through and taking away any heat. Uh, which also makes sense for this build because it's going to have quite a few capture cards in it. So just having something like a heavy CPU cooler wouldn't be enough to move the air out the whole system. So let's get this out of the case because I haven't even opened this case 
out yet. I've looked at some of these components, but most of them are still sealed in their boxes. Ooh. Yeah. Which for me is it's been quite difficult because I've been like a kid at Christmas. I do love building these things. There we go. Come on. Um Enemy of Austria, I've got the port for you one second, you can control it. <laughs> Twitch plays Adam's camera. Yeah, see what happens. Oh, there we go. Just it work, so. All right. so, let's get this out of the case. Let's get the case out of its case. Come on. Oh, I am very excited. Yes, I'm very excited to be doing this. But one thing at a time. Let's take care of business first. This is the entree before the main. The what? This is the uh, the aperitif. What's the word? Yeah, aperitif. Aperitif. Yes. Um, Bef before the entree. Yeah, I remember we actually leaked it in one of the other YouTube videos. So I just pasted it there for people. Leaked what? The IP address. For the building. All oh, right. You would have to be some very, very keen-eyed viewers. Right, it's in there. <laughs> that is a box. That is a box, and it's actually a slightly smaller box than I thought it would be. Mm. But oh, it's got a detachable detachable grill on top that's nice which means that if it's full of uh, dust and stuff I can take it off although actually if you saw the camera shot into the computer before you'll have seen how dusty it wasn't after five years because with passive airflow it doesn't pick up dust really mm, yeah yeah <laughs> I've actually bought a can of uh, air squirty air yeah yeah go through it fast though yeah oh yeah yeah if, well if you ever need it I've got three cans of contact cleaner All right. that's properly designed if, if anything's mucky to mm -hmm. really clean it out yeah because I go through that stuff a lot cleaning out things like mixing desks so this has a really nice uh, tempered glass side panel I've never had a tempered glass case before mostly because I've been reusing the same cases for about the past 10 years mm -hmm. But case design has come a long way. Yeah, just ease of use and cable management. Like. Yeah. Spaces in the back for cable management never used to be a thing. No one used to care what it looked like. Now people want it to look right. Oh, people cared what it looked like, but they had absolutely no taste. Do you remember cold cathode lighting inside, like, the blue mm -hmm. and green strips? <laughs> uh, Rat Madness, you're welcome, mate. <laughs> oh, yeah, did someone... Uh, Pick up on the video. Someone wanted to hack our network yeah. and got punished suitably. We're never going to give it up. <laughs> okay, so. Some this crusty old cathodes. Indeed. If you want to get a shot of the inside of this, mm -hmm. uh, before I start pulling it apart. Well, Adam, where is your RGB? RGB is in the bowels of hell where it belongs. <laughs> Okay, that's weird. My whole office is RGB. Yeah. Screw you, Oh, yeah, that's what I'm honest. You don't need RGB because you're not gaming. RGB just makes you good at games. Mm. It does. So this is a little dark, but there's there's a fractal fan here, uh, and I'll spin it round. There's a fractal fan here, which I'm going to remove. I'm going to have to look at the, uh, the manual now before I destroy anything as to how to take the front off. Reading the manual. Boom. I know, I know. Boom. So uh, unlike me. Uh, but I'll tell you what, as I've, I don't know where the technology is getting more complicated, and I think it is, but I read manuals way more than I used to when I was younger. I well, feel like it's a sign of old age, but... Yeah. Right, remove side panels. Uh, I worked that bit out. Oh, it wants me to remove the other side panel too, which is on thumb screws, that's fine. Oh, better transition. Nah. RGB for disco night, Adam. 
we do have like a it's huge c- coil of RGB in the room that yeah. we bought four years ago. I do keep thinking about uh, putting actual RGB strips around. I'm probably going to do that at some point. Those those strips are pretty cheap and nasty, aren't they? But newer <laughs> newer RGB stuff, I think, is a lot more controllable. Like you can do nice warm whites and cold whites and. Yeah, I'd have thought you still would have do that with that stuff, though. It looks very... I've just bought some new stuff, and, yeah, the LEDs do look better and a mm. bit more robust, but it's much for muchness. I mean, LED, LEDs are coming a long way in five years, so... Yeah. Well, the other thing is the old ones. I was always quite sensitive to the refresh rate. It always made me feel like I had a headache. Mm. The new ones don't seem to do that. I'll nick that stuff, then. Uh, if you want it, have it. <laughs> I'll find somewhere to put some RGB, extra RGB. You know what they say, life uh, finds a way. <laughs> well, the, more, the more we're going to be streaming in here than setting the light up. You may notice that the, the lights are uh, in the background are currently off. That's because we had a leak on Wednesday night at 2 a.m. in the morning, which is lovely. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're currently running on a reduced ring main in the building. Uh, we only have the sockets on because there's been water damage. So, uh, yeah, having some old emergency lighting up as well. It was running for two days. Joy. Okay, so this comes with a nice... We're all safe, we're all good. Hmm? Said we're all safe and we're all good. Yes, and that's what counts, which is good. Turned out there was a tree in the guttering, essentially. Nice. Oh, you actually get a cloth for your... uh, uh, When you put your fingerprints on the glass, which inevitably will happen. Most people who write manuals need a kick in the ghoulies. The ghoulies, yes, quite. So, uh, I've got this thing for the power supply. Oh, yeah. I, I don't want to say he hates this, but imagine having sound reactive RGB lights whilst mixing. See, I've seen some more tasteful ones recently, but if it's full on boof, boof, as you're mixing, that makes sense. You can set the sensitivity. I mean, it could be cool. Like, you know what? We could set something up really funky to like change colour based on frequency or something, mm. so you can have visual representation of your mix. Yeah. Um, so they, like, what, what frequency is that? Just look at the lights. I know exactly what it is. Hmm. Uh, David Nozzy from Mix Plus TV, uh, who I interviewed a little while back, uh, behind his console, he has like two tubes almost that mm-hmm. from, from the centre upwards and downwards, it kind of pulses with different waveforms based mm-hmm. on what it can hear. So even when he's speaking and that kind of thing, it, it, it reacts. Have you seen that kind of on cool. Facebook that's going around with... Um, the RGB lights you put around the back of your TV and then USB into it. No. And then they set the lights up based on what's on the screen. So All the right. demo video is showing lightning going off. And the okay. back of the TV, the lights are matching the lightning on the screen. Oh. So when the lightning goes to the left, the left side of the monitor behind it glows white. Hmm. It's really cool. For what, watching like a, like Avengers or something like that would be amazing. Sounds like it's got potential. Corsair Platinum Dominator RGB <clears throat> has a cool equaliser setting. Yeah, but anything that goes inside the computer, I'm not going to see. <laughs> That's the thing. Uh, the This computer's going down under the live streaming desk, and the other computer is going down in the console. You can RGB it all you want. I won't see it. <laughs> yeah, so this box is actually for the old computer, isn't it? Yes. Yes, yeah, so that's why this is kind of like the, the starter package, essentially, because... How's this, does this come off? Probably does come off. How does the front come off? Because uh, I need the front to pop off. Better say, like for for an audio channel, the chat is going nuts over RGB lighting. It's funny, isn't it? <laughs> Glitz sells, yes. But who's buying? <laughs> but yes, yeah, to say with more streaming, having some cool lighting in here will definitely be uh, worthwhile. I think. Mm-hmm. You can even set it, to, or you can set it to link to OBS. So that you've got like live lights and offline lights and stuff. Yeah, I've been thinking we've we've got upstairs some uh, a set of lights that's like proper on air recording playback from the BBC. I forgot about those. Yeah, so I could sync those up to an Arduino or something with a, a two hundred forty volt relay. I'm also thinking whether I could put it outside my office so that Ash knows when I'm on a video call or not. Because <laughs> she's constantly like, "Are you on camera?" She doesn't want to be on my work calls. I get that a lot. But then I've, I've said to Mickey, just, it's fine. Which is why, like, last night, Ivy came, came to say goodnight on the stream. She had no idea what was going on. Makes the living room look like a boudoir. 
How is that a bad thing, Marty? Marty! I haven't got my stream deck today, so I can't do it. I have to do the voices myself. There we go. There we go, slowly destroying the thing. Day one is already, uh, yeah, yeah. Pull the front panel off by yanking at the bottom. I mean, is it time for the first that's what she said of the day? Oh. Okay, but yeah, uh, back on topic. I'm getting rid of this fractal fan. I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's lovely. Uh, but the Noctua stuff, that stuff is the daddy. So, there it is. Out comes fractal fan number uno. Actually, I might put that, if I can, in... Yeah, I can put that in the top. I'm going to use it as an exhaust fan in the top. If you don't break it. Yeah. I'm left-handed and I'm using my screwdriver with my right hand. Clever idea of the day. There we go. So... Uh, I can never remember which way. There we go. Flow that way. There we it's go. It's been mentioned a few times. Have we explained the uh, the heat sink? I don't think we have. Uh, I, I, I mention it every now and again, but the giant heat sink uh, from a company called No Fan. It that, is epic. It is epic, but yeah, the, the, the company's called No Fan. That should give the game away. Uh, the, that entire build had absolutely, I mean absolutely, no fans. As in like, yeah, you, know, you got no fans. Yeah, look, see, CPU is in the middle of that. Just about to see it. Yep, so it was designed entirely to passively radiate up to 95 watts away with no fans. The power supplies are Silverstone with no fans. You gotta think about the, the surface area of that. It's absolutely huge. It is indeed. Like think of every single the surface area of every single one of these strands. So all of that is dissipating heat. Yep. So we can all go through all of this. <laughs> Hello to Mike Robinson, uh, who's just said uh, remember to use all the thermal paste and press down on the heatsink until it pours out of the sides. Yes indeed. We'll do it like a cooking show. <laughs> That's not just any thermal paste. It's Hubbo Studios thermal paste. I did actually save some on my cryo knot just for this build. What sort of nerd am I to actually hold back special thermal paste? Look at that close shot. It's the money shot that. £2.50. <laughs> yeah, so some lighting is a little blown out, but that's mainly because we aren't. Yeah, the lights have to be quite strong because with these PCs being black, uh, you are otherwise not going to see a damn thing. Yeah, we can't really blend the light either with the natural... We're not able to blow any light into the room. No. Um, what you could do, actually, is you could uh, turn down the contrast with the filter in OBS. If you want to do that. With a filter? Yeah, you right-click on your video source, go to... and then go to filters. Oh, right, okay. Uh, I think I've already... West camera? Yeah. Scale uh, filtering? No, down the bottom there's actual oh. filters. And then there's one called colour correction that you can add bottom left. Effect filters? Uh, audio video filters. Audio video. Ah, I didn't think you could do this. Or is it down the bottom? There's there's one that's specifically called yeah, colour no, correction. Yeah, there's all VSTs. Right, yeah, colour correction is what you want. Because my... It doesn't uh, do much, but what it does... Those Logitech do, cameras have controls in OBS anyway. They do. So I always just use that. But yeah, those controls are fairly sensitive, but you could turn the contrast down a little. Grey! Grey! <laughs> like I said, sensitive. Uh, yeah. Okay. Do I ever sleep? <laughs> Certainly feels like I don't recently, but... Let's go yeah. back in time, shall we? To the olden days. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Ye olde Adam. <laughs> Uh, okay, so these are the absolute beasts themselves. He <laughs> shouldn't have given me this. <laughs> what? He so shouldn't have given me this. <laughs> oh, you can. Oh, good God. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not even on the live camera, though. 
<laughs> Just hit OK and transition. There you go. Now we're cooking with gas. This is how video should be. Wait, how do I even get to the filter now? <laughs> Quality <laughs> content, ladies and gentlemen. Quality content. So if I change the filter, can I change this on the fly? Hmm? I can change it on the fly. You can. What colour do we want, Adam? Thanos, Adam. Yes. Green Lantern, Adam? The Hulk! <laughs> Like I said, quality content. <laughs> Do these just find your natural in? skin tone? There it is. <laughs> Henning colours. Yeah. Suddenly I look like Henning Barley. Hello, I am German. I like to do music production and things. I like shiny, shiny shirts. Found us at him. IDE cables, man. I found some hard drives at IDE the other day. I was trying to figure out which hard drives were which in some archive drives, and I pulled one out, and it had uh, IDE and SATA ports on it. All right. It was, like, really old, like, when they were just moving across, when you had the option. Mid-2000s kind yeah. of era, yeah. It was like, this must be an old drive. The one behind it was old. It was very old footage. Yeah. I've seen older. Mm. Well, yeah. Right. Uh, did this have a manual with the fan? Oh, second manual. We need a manual counter. Oh, it, it's got a picture in the front. Uh, so number one is just the extension cable. Three to four pin adapter. Just because it's got these weird things with it that look very, very strange. I don't know what the heck they are, but they, they look kind of cool. Now, I'll, uh, I'll install it properly. Uh, like that. Okay. Your keyboard is weird. The buttons aren't where it says it should be. Oh, it's a German keyboard, yeah. Surprise! I really am Henning. Ha ha ha! Yeah, I, I got my laptop uh, on eBay uh, for about a thousand pounds less than it should have been. The only caveat was the keyboard was German. <laughs> yeah, we've got a manual counter now. A what now? A manuals counter. Manuals red too. <laughs> Love it. I have way too much hair to be henning. But this is a wig! Ho oh, ho! Oh. Why do you think henning's bald? Henning can grow hair, he just has his hair bald so that he can wear wigs easier. Mike Robinson, floppy dit, 40 floppies to restore data from. Like, weren't they like two megabytes? 1.44 megabytes. Yeah. Tops. Wow. Well. Like, that's not even a. A JPEG in today's standards. Yeah. This that baffles me. How do we? How are we able to get any sort of images on those sorts of things? It must be super low quality. Well, most people's screens are a maximum of six forty by four eighty pixels. Because you look, I'm like, obviously they, games and stuff were mostly code and they're all like tiny sprites. But yeah. so I remember installing Brian Lara Cricket came on uh, ten floppy disks. Wow. I think Brian Lara 95, I think it was. That's that's big. That's like large. Yeah, well it had like every every team in the world with all the real player names and stuff. Oh right. So that's a lot. Mm. Right, so What did I do? There we go. Oh. Should probably be doing this the other way around so that the uh Ah, it was see. software for a plasma cutter in a factory. Ah, oh. Okay, that sounds that. niche enough that you wouldn't... Yeah, you wouldn't yeah. be able to find that anymore. Yeah. You know what there's a whole industry of, which is hilarious? Um, sewing machine manuals. Really? There's a whole industry online. You'd think, oh, my, my dad wanted a PDF for um, a sewing machine of my mum's. Yeah. It was about 10 years old or whatever. 
You go online and there are website after website after website selling PDFs of the manuals for old, obscure sewing machines. Right. Like it's an actual full on industry. Because most things you can just, you'll find the manual somewhere online. Nope. For sewing machines, you've got to buy them. Hmm. No, the 3900 XT is not going in this case. Not not that, that you are able to judge uh, how a processor works from the case. And what would be wrong with that case anyway? Yeah, what's wrong with a mesh of 5C? I'm just going to drop a brand name in there. That's, ju- that's the product name. What's wrong with my Fractal Design <laughs> Mesh of 5C? Brought to you by Fractal Design. But not brought to you by Fractal Design because we paid for it. Uh, <laughs> uh, 5.4 drive, yeah, the, the old uh, B drive floppies. The big See, ones. That's the thing, you've only ever known them as B drives. I, I roughly remember them being actual startup drives. Oh, no, yeah. I used to do. My first experience with computing was when I was three or four. I used to help my dad do his wages. And wow. All I used to do is just put the discs in, basically, and hit enter when he told me to. <laughs> but that was on an old Apple II. Oh, yeah, like an Apple IIc or something like that. With a, Was it green? Green, green yeah. screen and a dot matrix printer. Nice. And, yeah, you had to put one disc in to load it up, and it had two drives so that you could um, have the actual operating system on and then also run his wages program that would do his wages and spit out all the uh, wage slips. Yep, sounds about right. I, I I remember... Oh, I need Glenn on here swearing at the case, yeah. Right, so that's those fans on. Oh, yeah, there's a nice dust filter on the bottom as well. That's, that's always handy. There we go, so just pop this back on. And now we have four fans in this case. And being the complete idiot that I am, I've managed to put this dangling on off oh, the no, front. Yeah, never mind. Up first. What have you done? Oh, um, this... this uh, is dingle dangling at the front, which is the least useful place for so it to be. So what are these fans? Uh, so these these two are Noctua fans, which are really quiet and really efficient. They're going to force all the air in, uh, and then these two fans are just helping to uh, remove some so of the hot. What's wrong with the fractal fans? Uh, the the only thing wrong is the thing that I've done. I've put this one on the top, and I've put it such a way that this. Oh yeah, you, you, sorry, I thought you didn't remove it, you put it on top in the end. Yeah, I did. I put it on top, but the cable I've put so it's hanging out the front instead of out the back. <laughs> rip. Yeah, RIP. Rip, 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 rip. Um, that's fine, I'll just run it through. There we go. The fan on Done. my water cooling on my desktop just started making noise. Oh dear. Uh, Is it just the fan? Is it just going... Ding, 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 ding? I've already, I've already taken it apart once, so I think it's the ball bearings in it. Yeah, bearing bearings go on fans. I mean, you can just replace. A I was fan. going to say, do you think I was going to replace the fan off it? Is it the is it the fans on the radiator? It's on the back of the computer that the water cooling goes on. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those those are just these. Those are just oh, uh, case fans. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. The case one then. Yeah. Cool. Solved. Uh, do a little bit of research. Make sure you get one that's for sta- static pressure. Okay. Because uh, there's two two main types of fans, case fans. There's one that's to do with uh, speed, and there's one to do with static pressure. It's to do with how they angle the, the fins. Oh, right, okay. Um, and make sure it's the right, right way wound, round. Right way wound, yeah. Right way wound. Right, right way wound. wound. Well, it could be the wrong way wound, but it'll okay. still do something. <laughs> but yeah, um, if you get fans that are just about speed, they kind of waft air through, which is nice. But if you put them on a radiator or something, they don't have the push to push the air through it. Mm-hmm. So static pressure fans are designed with kind of more of an angle on the fan, so it actually pushes it through. I do remember having one computer overheating once and then looking inside it and realising that all the fans were pointing in with... Uh, all of them? <laughs> yeah. Ah, oops. <laughs> it is actually, you know what? It's disturbing to say that I must have got lucky because I reckon I was probably 20 before I realised that you could put a fan on the wrong way around. Ah, so I think most of the fans I've installed have been potluck. The computers <laughs> haven't exploded. Yeah, the the F twelves are the static pressure ones, which is counterintuitive because these are the S ones and S stands for static, mm-hmm. but that's not the case. <laughs> so it's, it's a Corsair water cooling for my. Oh, is it a hydro? Is it like an H eighty or an H one hundred or? I don't know. 
It's the one that I've got. Five. Hey. Yeah, it's it's an H something. It's an all in one Corsair. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just. But you don't actually see it. There's no water visible or anything. It's not yeah. like Tubes and stuff. Sorry to everyone at home. I'm just on the floor for a minute because this idiot. I'll find him. This idiot forgot to take the power supply out of that case. I'll find him, guys. Don't worry. Where oh. is he? There he is. Ah, oh, I'm down with the beer. There we go. Yeah. Uh, I forgot to take the power supply out of the uh, the rack case. Oh. So yeah, and the power supply fans going as well. Hmm. My power supply fans going as well. Oh, oh, that's that's more annoying because well, that's much more dangerous. Yeah, but I think I can just replace it with one of the other power supplies we got upstairs from the old videos. Yeah, Same I suppose thing. so. Right. Uh, this is why I got the manual. Is there a particular way oh. back to have this? Manual, manual alert. There manual is, there alert. we go. There is a specific way up that I have to have it. Yeah, there we go. And yeah, it's a little weird to me doing this outside of the case, but it seems a lot more convenient. That's for sure. So that's a fanless power supply, as well. Yes, the whole thing was fanless. No, no fans in the power supply, but that meant it had to be like ultra premium grade components, so that they wouldn't generate much heat because they're really, really efficient. Also, like it's. 80 platinum rated but only 520 watts uh, which for a lot of people you'd say well that that seems like overkill it's over engineered that kind of thing mm -hmm. but for 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 this and for what for what i wanted it to do especially being silent that was arguably the right thing it's what was needed so it's what got done but yeah, with the, with the four case fans now, that should provide some airflow to pull the extra heat out from here. Dancing girls during the break. So what are you doing with the um, heat sink then? Hmm? That heat sink. That's staying on. It'll still fit in there, will it? Hope so. <laughs> Let's find out. Might have to take this top fan back out. It will definitely fit because it's in the size of an ATX form factor. I was just thinking wet wise. Oh, it, it, it's deep enough. It'll, that'll easily go. Yeah? I, I reckon so. It'll, it'll probably touch the glass, yeah. which is why they made it with this kind of soft bit on top here. Yeah. So is that, so that, that, that's still going to get hot though, right? Well... If it's touching glass. The plastic's not good. The plastic's an insulator. The copper's the conductor. I know, but it'll still get warm. Warm's fine. Glass doesn't melt till it's about 300 degrees. Or more. Mm. Yeah. I mean, nobody's going to be round kind of sticking their face on the side of it. <laughs> don't lick the computer case. Yeah, do not... Warning, do not lick. Right, so that's, that's going to go... in there. Like a glove. Yeah, like a glove. Go on, you... Like a glove that needs stretching in a little bit. Let's get some close-ups on Adam struggling to screw in screens. There we go. Like a glove. A very annoying glove. But a glove nonetheless. Where's the closest place for this fan to go through? Probably there. Okay. There we go. So, uh, this being already mounted, I don't have to do anything silly with... Uh, back plates which is good but if I did have to do that it's nice that this is all there for me to just do that so prepare the motherboard prepare the motherboard um why no define our case for silence um because silent cases are not silent uh it's a Something that I I keep a very uh, close eye on, and generally speaking, silent cases are for gamers who want relative silence, because uh, to keep something silent, you have to keep it sealed. And to keep it sealed, you need a lot of airflow. To have a lot of airflow, uh, to compensate for it being sealed, you need lots of fans, and they need to ramp up very, very fast. Because of that, they end up with a high-pitched whine. That's no good in a studio. I'd rather have four fans running at 800 RPM, uh, but with full airflow, 
then have four fans running at 2,000 RPM and going in a so-called silent case, which would only knock about 20 dB off that wine, which would still make it pervasive on everything that I did. Also, this is the live streaming setup. When I'm not live streaming, this won't be on. And when I am live streaming, it's a bit more of a lively atmosphere in here, so I'm going to be less bothered by a little bit of background noise. So it's, um, you know, the right time, the right purpose. Is your RAM 3800 hertz? It is not. It is 3600 hertz, and I will be turning the Infinity Fabric down to 1800 megahertz to match. Mmm. Someone knows their shit. I've been, I've been doing my reading up. I've been... Uh, Keeping some tabs on it all. Kind of have, have to, it's been moving fast. Have the Platinum ones 90 plus rated? Because that's closer to the actual efficiency. Something like that. Hi. You can clock the IF manually. Yeah, that's what I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So, um, for anyone who wasn't here at the very more beginning of the stream... With that PS PSU? Hmm? So it'll be much more efficient with that PSU. Um, well, it's... Yeah, the... They're always... I, I really go for efficient uh, So why are you not units. keeping that in there? Why are you not keeping that power supply in there? Because I've got a newer, nicer one. Yeah. <laughs> Simple as that. Um, I cannot spell. Spelling. Um, yeah, I've... The, the new one I've got is the Fractal Define Ion. Uh, or the Fractal Ion uh, power supply, which is still very, very good. Enemy Austria is agreeing with you about airflow? Yeah, I mean, it's it's just a perspective thing because there's nothing wrong with the, the more silent cases if that's your need. Like like I said, if you're if you're a gamer and you just need it not to be quite so loud, that's fine. But for me, frequency is more important than noise level. Can you remember the name of that tinnitus, tinnitus app that we covered on the stream? Uh, nope. <laughs> I was saying this. Uh, Scott was just saying about tinnitus. I because I forgot to try it. Because it was quite interesting. We did a stream a couple of months ago, where we covered an app that's designed to help people with tinnitus. And what, what it does, it does is it uses, uses you, find you find the frequency, frequency that you have, and it then puts, puts that, that in, in to, to kind, kind of cancel out that, that frequency. frequency. I don't know what it's called now, though. And I deleted it. It seems. Oh. Well. Yeah, top to bottom for the full chimney effect. That's not going to work either, because this is going to be under a desk. This is probably going to have about 40 mil of clearance above it. So this Ooh. fan here is going to do a little something. Boop. Sorry, guys. Yeah, so this, this top oh, yeah, fan's going to do a bit of something, but it's not going to do a great deal. If I tried to have more airflow coming out the top, it would just choke, because there would just be a layer of hot air that it'd be going into. That In this case no pun intended, uh, wouldn't be beneficial. Uh, Neocron, congratulations, you were the 100th message to of today's stream. Already? You win a prize. Wow. Your prize is, I don't give you a thumbs up. <laughs> there you go. All right, it's time If to... we get 200 messages, Adam will do a dance. But not until... <laughs> <laughs> right, it looks like, slightly annoyingly, but also not the worst thing in the world. Evening, Eduardo. Evening, sir. Do I remember what that app was, Liam? I'll, I'll find it. I'll find it now that someone's asked. Yeah. Um, the motherboard standoffs have been provided all separate, which is a little annoying, but they've, they've included a nice little tool with it that just kind of sits on top of a standoff that I can put a screwdriver bit in, so that's cool. Now, uh, my memory is shocking. Right, so I need all three across the top. Probably What's should... the um the site music? What's the site we get on news from most or you use quite a uh, lot? There's there's a few. There's music tech, music radar. Music and... radar. That's the one I'm thinking of. Right. And the other one was gear news. Those are the three. The holy three. Rip around's T minus. T minus. Ah. Yeah, the app's called T, the letter T minus. Um, it was quite interesting. There was a, it was a paid version, but there was you could basically test it using the library that was on there um, to see whether 
it can help. I was going to try it, um, but I haven't got around to it yet. I was noticing it last night. I thought that the freezer was uh, playing up, but no, it was just really, really quiet. It was the night when we had the leak and it was like 4 a.m. and I was waiting for my next shift to come down to make sure that the building wasn't burning down. Hmm. And at that time in the morning, everything's really quiet. There we go. This is a bit of a weird manoeuvre, but one of the standoffs from the the <laughs> old case came off with the motherboard. So I was having to use my pliers there to uh, hold the standoff still whilst I separated it from the rest. Okay. I might actually put all new standoffs in the case because I've got a pack here with some much nicer, longer standoffs, but I'll see what's possible in there. In the meantime, I'm going to put that standoff in the case again. <laughs> what's more boring than building a computer? Watching someone build a computer. Love you guys. I'm out. See you next week. <laughs> Robert, it's your prerogative. Some yeah, of it's us... entirely up to you. I mean, we're doing it, and we're doing it on stream. If you don't want to watch it, that's fine by me. Yeah, we'll see you next time. You're welcome to watch whatever you like to watch. And it is a Friday night, yeah. so if your version of a Friday night isn't, building a computer that's fine unfortunately for us it is it is <laughs> yeah absolutely is 100 percent. and also this is the most time we've been able to hang out in a long time given all the things that have been going on in the world that's very true so we're we're, we're two meters apart even though both are, we've been mostly isolating ourselves anyway so two meters two meters will keep us apart even though there's like zero airflow in here so <laughs> might as well be on top of each other kissing <laughs> Not again. <laughs> dance, monkey, dance. No, he's not at 200 messages yet. He won't dance. No, dance, magic, dance in labyrinth in my head. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Scott's going to be pretty much building an identical PC. Because uh, we, we talked, we, we, we did three whole streams talking about the different build options. And he, he's going for some slight variation on what I did. Do we but, have a build list? Hmm? Do we have a build list? Uh, we... I don't know if that one got saved. I can try and p p pull them up, though. Uh, I know that the mid-tier and the low-tier, definitely the parts list got saved. Because I could put it up in, like, the bottom of the stream, even. Yeah. Either, like, a graphic or anything. That would um, be kind of cool. Da -da -da. Eduardo's just joined the chat. Hello! He says, why the 3900 instead of the 2900? Because the 2900's an entire generation old. Because this this computer is designed to last a long time as well. Yeah. So it was time to upgrade the studio computer, and we needed a new streaming computer given that we're going to be doing a lot more streaming. Now I'm going to guess that you meant the 3900X compared to the XT. Now here's the thing: I didn't know at the, when the 3900XT was announced whether it was going to be better than the X or not, but I decided to kind of gamble and on the day of release, just order it before it's sold out. Because otherwise, if it did turn out that it was way better, and I missed out on it because they all sold out on day one, well, tough. So I decided, let's do it. And it turns out that they are very similar, uh, according to all the reviews, but the, the XT 3900 is a little better, probably not enough better to justify the price difference but what that's on me so that doesn't make it bad i know that i said about the keyboard guys because i was trying to find the colon bottom i've just noticed that this isn't even a qwerty keyboard yep it Q -W -E -R -T -Z. goes qwertz i'm trying to type yes and it's like zest so the keys are way way yeah you i know they are in your mind i know but it's it, funny. It's disorienting. Yeah. But then I was trying to find where Y is. That's bizarre. Why? Yeah. Hey. Did a... Oh, I've got another uh, stuck. Um, oh, someone said about the box. Built... Yes, it does say built to perform design to win. Does it? It does. But it's not as good as having a gaming chair, though. That's the only thing you need to be good. Yeah. Gaming chair or nothing. Yeah. Gaming chair, RGB lighting, that's it, you win. Right, it's time to stick this big boy 
in the box. Oh, this already has uh, somewhere on this board. <laughs> Zerty. Oh, God, no. Oh, God, no. Oh, God, God, no, no, no. Yes. Oh, yeah, here it is. It's underneath the cooler. This board already has a one terabyte um, Samsung 970 Evo on there for the boot drive. Mm. I was thinking that what I was going to do was... That's uh, one of the PCI Express ones? Yes. It's NVMe. It's fast. It's Gen 3. It's fast. Uh, I was thinking of taking that out, and because I've got another one for the new computer and using them in RAID, RAID 0, so oh. I get double funds. But after some thinking, I decided that this already has everything set up. This has Windows, this has all my programs, this has the streaming setup ready to go. Yeah, you're gonna want that as like, yeah. It would be a lot of work for me. It'd be like, I'd lose a day just getting the whole streaming setup ready. Are you gonna image that hard drive for the new one then? Or? No, uh, I am gonna make a fresh build for the other one. Uh, and that's something that I do as a, as a force of habit, actually. I make myself not do it by an image because uh, over the years, especially with audio programs and probably with others as well, um, you update versions and update versions and update versions and bits of old versions get left behind. And when you've got 10 or 20 old versions, it can start to cause weird problems that shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with Windows and tons of Windows updates can start to slow it down. And CCloner does a decent job with it, but when you've got third party stuff that it doesn't know about, that's when you get into problems. But yeah. So every couple of years, maybe every year if I'm being paranoid, I just start again, completely start again. So I've got only the latest graphics drivers, the latest version of Windows, the latest versions of the plugins and programs that I use and nothing else. And then from there, it does tend to get cluttered with, with crap. Mm. But over that next year, I mean, the cycle repeats. Um, I do back things up and image them, but... That's in case there's a major failure, or whatever, yeah. in which case the next day I can be straight back. But. Fedo reckons that RAID 0 isn't actually noticeably faster in real life day to day scenarios. Well, neither's NVMe versus SATA, but I was going to do it depends for what fun. You're doing. Depends what, well, <laughs> depends what you're doing, though. You will notice a difference with that, depending on, like, if you're copying files or something, you'll notice it. Of course, you will. The yeah, I mean, it very much depends on the application. Um, if I was to play games on this, again, you definitely wouldn't notice because the job of the computer in that circumstance is it loads whatever section of the game it needs into RAM, then doesn't really use the drive again until the next time it needs to fetch stuff to load it into You'd RAM. You'd be surprised what games now... Gaming has got to the point where because of, I don't know, quick development times, some of the optimization with gaming is so bad on AAA games even, mm. that, like for instance, um, Dota, if you've got a slow hard drive, yeah. there's quite a lot of that right. that you'll struggle with. The games that need to, like games that have got really large maps that need to load things that weren't there before, mm. but you can like move quickly, you'll find that the slow hard drives can actually affect gameplay. Yeah, no, if we're talking like spinning hard drives, yeah, absolutely, 100%. But the difference between a SATA hard drive SSD even that can do 500 megabytes a second and something that can do 3 gigabytes a second, but they have equally fast seat times, yeah, you're not really right, going to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, did, you said SATA before as well, so that's why I was a little Yeah, bit... sorry, like SDs that are on SATA specifically, uh, because, yeah, spinning rust... Yeah, Austria, everything's backed up to the cloud pretty much in real time. As soon as we hit stop on a recording, it's in the cloud. Yeah. Every, everything that we do is backed up instantly, and then at in the end of the day... In triplicate, as he likes to say. In triplicate, yes. If it's not been done in triplicate and signed off, then uh, your mother will be fed to the uh, the, the bug beast of trial. Or is it the grandmother? Um, <laughs> to, to quote Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and the Vogons. Right, one you more of these. Watts, probably five, three, three. Yeah. And oh, by the way, there's plenty of space with this 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 thing. Look, it's nowhere near the glass. Oh yeah. Let me uh, switch across so people can see. Thing is, I've set the camera right, but then you've got the chat on the right, so it's there we go. Move the chat then. No, no, it's fine. It needs to go somewhere. It's just yeah. where I framed it. It's a bit of empty space. 
Uh, there we go. I'm making sure to screw in every screw with this motherboard as well, just because this CPU cooler is significantly heavy. 2080 Super versus 2070 Super, go. So it's just 2080, like, what, I don't understand what... This one's more expensive and better than the other. And I've got a 2070 Super, and it super. Yeah. Question is what you're doing with it. Mm. If you don't tell me what you're doing with it, then the 2070 wins all, all day and long for me. my 2070 is amazing for audio because of the RTX voice, which is insane. It's yeah. so good. Liam loves his uh, 2070. Right, so, next, next up. Anticlimactic. Yeah. I mean, what what were you expecting? They're, they're, in, they're in the same series. <laughs> I mean, if you want me to talk one brand versus another brand or something like that, then, then I've got a conversation to go at. But if, you, if it's like, should I buy the BMW 5 Series from this year with the 1.8 or the 2 litre? It's like, I don't know. You pick. You've already decided you're going. Well, I mean, yeah. it's one of those things, isn't it, with NVIDIA, that the 2070 is technically lower, but it's a newer car, so that actually running up against each other they yeah. don't necessarily benchmark isn't what you'd expect for the money so you probably are better going for value for money getting a 2070 Super yeah plus the 2070 Super is pretty much it's a it's a 2080 that failed yeah with a couple of the bits disabled yeah and that's what the that's what uh, Intel and AMD used to do not even that long ago with CPUs. Anybody remember triple core processors? Three core AMDs, that kind of thing? No, they were a thing for a while and it was basically a quad core processor where a core had failed. So they just sealed it off and went, this is a three core now. I mean, some people got a bargain. Did I tell you but that my 2070 was meant to, meant to be a Max Q? Uh, and then I, I ordered it and when my laptop came, it didn't have a mechanical keyboard. Like I thought it was going to. Okay. I was like, well, that sucks. I'm not really going to use the keyboard because I've got a proper keyboard, but right. it sucks that it's just a really shitty RGB one now. And then I looked mm. on my computer and realized that I don't have a Max Q. I just have a 2070 Super. Huh. So they must have changed models at scan whilst I was ordering it. Right. And what they did is they changed it from mechanical keyboard to crappy keyboard and from Max Q to Super. <laughs> Win. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe they had enough people complain that they went, let's just change this. But yeah, okay, it's time now. The graphics card is in, so it's time for all the... If you want to wind him up, guys, just keep messaging. 200 messages and he's got to dance. And whoever <laughs> whoever sends the 200th message gets to decide what the dance is. Yeah, has to be... Can't be a COS, but... <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, 2070 Max Q is great. Like, it's a great card. But the the mobile one runs really, like, slow comparison to the, the, the Super. Mm -hmm. Unless you overclock it. And I've got a lot of fans, so... Speaking of fans, here's the first actual fan that this computer has ever Switch it. had. There we go. Oh, this okay. this is the... Uh... Oh, no, it was on that one. It was on that yeah. one. That's why I moved... <laughs> That's why I moved. Uh, so that's that's the Black Magic uh, Mini Recorder 4K. Uh, so that's going to go in somewhere. I'm just trying to work out because I've got that. The A oh, that's that's actually four times. That that pretty much decides where that's going to go. Will it fit? Will it blend? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you sense it just, just, but it will go. Pizza. I just Have you noticed, to... by the way, that your fans and your heatsink match in what's been referred to in chat as poop brown colour? Poop brown? Gotta love poop brown. And also, on the camera, it looks like um, that slightly grey plastic looks white. So it actually looks like it's all white and poop. Nice. It looks very uh, coordinated. Good stuff. So this, this uses PCI Express four times, which means it, there's only one place it can go. And that's there. Yeah, I mean that this computer, Samuel, is it, it, it never made a sound before. It, it was weird as well. Like yeah. you know that even if you've got a really quiet computer, you know that it's on. Because there's a fan running, like as Adam said, even if it's in a sealed case, 
you can get a sense that there's a computer on in the room somehow, even if you can't quite hear the frequency, it's like right on the edge of the limit, you know there's a computer on. With this, you had zero idea if there was a computer on in this room. It was, in all honesty, it used to freak me out a little bit. Yeah. It was a bit too quiet for me. It, it can be a little bit upsetting at first until you get used to it. Yeah. Right, so there's another one of these coming out, because... I'm also putting in a USB 3. <laughs> the worm is on the list of dances. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, so that was the Blackmagic capture card that went in. This is a USB 3 set because I'm going to be using USB capture devices as well. Oh, that's a good shout. Good mm. thinking, Batman. Ah. I would not have thought of that. I'd have just got a fucking hub. Well, that's the thing, because if you get a hub... Yeah, it's all on the same bandwidth. It's all on the same bandwidth. Yeah. And I discovered recently through doing more research that you would think, because USB 3 is 5 gigabit a second, and USB 2 is like 480 megabit a second, you'd think you can have loads of USB 2s on there and they'll add up, but they don't work like that, apparently. It goes into like USB 2 mode. So then your 480 megabit is then shared across all the USB 2 devices. So if you have a USB 3 cable plugged into a USB 3 hub and a USB 2 cable, does it instantly downgrade unless it's a high-end one? I don't think so. Right. But if you try and have another USB 2 device, they kind of share that. Mm. Yeah. I've always thought that. I mean, I've got some. I've got two USB 3 hubs on my laptop because well, it's a laptop. It's not yeah. Many ports. Um, and yeah, I don't plug any hard drives or anything into it. Like I leave always leave one. Goodbye. Spare one on the actual computer itself for hard drives. Mm. For that reason. So. What's we got? Nearly there with the component install. Nearly an hour and twenty into the stream, <laughs> and <laughs> one more. People are just suggesting uh, dances now, which oh, is God. a new message each time they suggest one. <laughs> so we're getting closer. Uh, how are you keeping count, by the way? Well, I was hoping the restream would have another message. I don't know if it'll say 200, because it's going to say 500 next. Maybe, or 250, or something like that. Let's see. Is it in settings? Appearance bot analytics? There we go. Uh, there we go. And there we go. That's all of that in there. Now for a little bit of extra bonus goodness before I start cabling and then this one's done. Oh, it's already got a little bit of extra weight in. Do I do an internal sh yeah. shot? Can we analytics. see? Oh, we're, we're on internal already. We're on what? Oh, you want a wide? Uh, I don't know, probably want a close where we can see all the things. Oh, okay, I get you. It's looking nice, actually. Yeah. So this is the everything computer, because thing about streaming like PCs... Cable management. That's because there's no cables yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Top tier cable Shh. management. I'm surprised, pleasantly surprised, that this fan fits in here. Yeah. Uh, with a little bit of clearance as well, so that's good. So that means that air's going to gently be drawn from two sides of the CPU cooler. Uh, but it's got the 1050 Ti, two different capture cards, and the USB header which means that the the back panel if I show you that the back panel's kind of full <laughs> and there's the space for one teeny tiny USB one times device maybe but pr pretty much that's full up so uh, the only thing that's left to go in there now is two greetings bommel greetings uh, that is a capture card, yes. Two four terabyte Seagate Barracuda hard drives, which will be in RAID one as a mirror, uh, just to record the uh, the streams to locally, just in case we have like a stream crash. Which internet internet can be flaky sometimes, so it's always good. Do you know what the make and model of that heatsink is again? It's a no fan NF ninety five C. There you go. No fan NF95C. Something wrong with me that I just know stuff like that. Uh, uh, it, yes. <laughs> yeah. I would say I'd get help. But My it's saying is the capture card too close to the heatsink? Nope. Nope, they don't touch. And it's also, it's in the same place that it was in the studio PC for a year. 
it's not a problem. As long as they don't touch, there is no problem. And they do not touch. There we go. Thought you looked after servers, Marty. You should know full well that things get crammed in there. Okay, so... Oh, okay. I have the number of messages now. Oh, how many? Uh, I'm not going to say. It's not 200, then. It's not 200, now. Right. We're going total messages as well, so you can message across any of the other platforms. Right. I don't know if the guys in Chiat can see what I'm doing, but I am installing two spinning rust hard drives on these rubber vibration mounts. Very nice little design. Okay, Mike, stop. Spamming will get banned if that's what we're doing. Yeah, as funny as that is, let's, no. let's not. Marty Ma will ban you, he'll time you out. He'll do it, he loves to ban people. He doesn't get to do it much because the community is too nice. Yeah. <laughs> so don't give, him a, don't give him a chance. Don't give him ideas, <laughs> don't give him weaponry. Uh, where did I put the manual for this thing? Help! Is it near my beer? Let's find it. Is it you are the beer? only one, Austria, who's talking in Twitch chat. Usually I'd be in there as well, but I'm kind of down here at the moment. We're kind of we're new to Twitch, <sighs> in all honesty. Um, we've been on YouTube mm. for years and years, but yeah, we've been Twitch affiliates for approximately three and a half minutes. Yeah. Um, where did I put the manual for the case? That one. Is that it? But mainly because we've we usually just used to do the podcast, whereas now streaming's going to become a lot more part of the overall uh, the overall plan for the channel. So you'll be seeing, as you've noticed, Adam has been streaming a lot, lot more recently. I have indeed. And that That's will be continuing, and if not, increase. Nice. It's been a lot of fun doing lots and lots of streaming. Um, and we're even... Can we let them know the secret we're planning around the studio? Which bit? Like setting up cameras and stuff. Oh, that's no secret. Yeah, yeah. I'm just making sure. So the idea is, because I've got some experience with some of this stuff is helping Adam set it up so that um, literally he'll be able to have a wireless mic on uh, and when he's just in the studio working he can be streaming even when he's doing the the videos you'll get to see him screwing up all of his lines repeatedly because he'll stream all of the videos and everything so it should be a lot of fun um, and if clients are happy with it we can even stream sessions and stuff yeah and if they if they want to that's very much the idea i'm going to try and encourage people to to get on that it'd be good promotion material for them yeah well, that's it if, if, a, if a band i mean the only uh, worry i've had so far is uh, a singer saying oh but what if i make a mistake on camera i'm like well you're in the studio we just do it again people expect that yeah so we're gonna have like so we'll be able to have it set up so like chat can be on one of the screens on the studio so like the bands will be able to see chat um, maybe even set up a, a chat screen in the live room as well. Um, so it'll be very cool. We even talked about putting a projector on the wall for chat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, I've been thinking about a few different ways to do this setup, and uh, it's entirely possible if we... Oh, we never banned anyone, okay, just time out, go on. No, I banned people. If someone's being a bit of a knob, then it's like, yeah, you get a chance, and then if you keep going... Nope! Harsh but fair. Everybody gets one. <laughs> Tell them, Peter. Everybody gets one. Right, there we go. Those two hard drives are now mounted on isolated rubber. You always thought AMD was no good for recording. Well, that's because it wasn't. Dun, dun, dun. Or at least it hasn't been for a long time. Um, it's, uh, that's, it's definitely worth talking about, and it seems to be coming back to the same subject repeatedly because a lot of people in music production have been doing it for a certain amount of time, and there's now perceived wisdoms that set in in people. And one of the main things is... Use Intel for audio because AMD's bad. And that comes down to the kind of the bulldozer era AMD chips being hot garbage, literal hot, and functionally garbage. 
And since the Zen architectures uh, come on the scene, AMD basically came back to parity and have now essentially overtaken Intel a little bit in pretty much everything. Um, yes, Intel do still have slightly faster chips, but at a greatly increased cost. But it's not night and day, and it's not um, it's not a stability worry either where it used to be because the new AMD Zen Ryzen whole architecture was designed by the genius who made all the Intel stuff. He left Intel to work for AMD for several years, and this is now the result of that. So, a bit of insider knowledge definitely helps. Ooh. I always watch uh, the news on the news on uh, level one techs, which is a channel run by fellow nerds, and they keep tabs on things that I wouldn't have thought of, like chief technical officers and CEOs and uh, interesting characters from companies moving from one company to another. Because on the day that happens, that doesn't mean much, but two years down the line that can be very important because that can mean that their genius vision or whatever it is that that person is well known for will start to rub off and trickle down the team and then eventually products will come out reflecting that. This is a perfect example of that. Because where it used to be that Intel were great and AMD sucked, it, was, it wasn't it was entirely because of one guy, but there was one, I can't remember his name now, it was really escaping me, it's slightly annoying. But... Uh, there was one guy whose reputation very much preceded him, and it will come to me eventually. And when he left Intel, everybody panicked. And kind of unsurprisingly, they've been uh, stuck in the same place with the 14 nanometer process ever since. So, yeah, about that. <laughs> Right, um... So I'm suggesting we just let you dance to your favourite ba Barry Manilow tune. My favourite Barry Manilow tune? Uh, that would be Copacabana. Um, what sample rate should I take for music? 44, 48 or 96? Uh, the answer is always the same. Depends what you're, um, what you're doing it for. Um, that has always been the case. Uh, and generally what that boils down to the short answer is 48k these days. Uh, it never used to be, uh, but what tends to be is 96k is generally for people who either have far more money than sense or don't know what they're talking about because they think that bigger numbers means more good. 44.1 kilohertz is the sample rate that CD production is, or rather was, done at. And the CD market has largely died uh, which means that streaming is all that's left, and TV and film has always, well, I say always, since DVDs came out at least, 48 kilohertz has been the standard for TV and film because that's what output formats uh, were decided on by the Society of Motion Picture and Television Experts, otherwise known as SMPTE. And the, a lot of the streaming services now accept 48k. It's higher sample rate, barely, but it's closer to the ideal, which is 64K, which nobody does, which is a real shame, but is really, that is the closest to ideal filter specs. I mean, 96K is also good for, for that and getting rid of anti-aliasing, but generally speaking, I've found that 48K gives me very pleasing results. Most people are happy with it and I don't need to resample for any reason at any point. Uh, and not resampling is far more important than any of the choices that you might make. Did you know that the CEO of AMD is the niece of the CEO for NVIDIA? Uh, what, Dr. Lisa Sung? Yeah. Uh, I did not know that. It doesn't the CEO of Jensen Huang, apparently. That does not surprise me. Lisa Su and Jensen Huang. Oh, right, okay. Uh, and... And let's say congratulations to Rock and Roll, who is the 200th message. Yeah! <laughs> tonight's chat, you get to decide what Adam, what dance Adam, we're not putting any songs on because we don't want any copy strikes or anything. 
So you can just ask him to do a dance, of which he will do for approximately 2.7 seconds. <laughs> Thank you to chat for this momentous occasion. Uh, you have approximately 20 seconds to decide on your dance. Otherwise, it will be void. Uh, there we go. So I'll just tuck that cable in there. Um, well, you say um, record, mix and master at 48 unless they want a CD. No, talk to your artist first. Be clear with them what do they want it for. If they have a market where they only want to work for CD production, do it at 44.1. Why? Because that's the sample rate that CDs run at. I get that, but why not just do 48 and downsample? Because there's always some inherent quality lost when you resample. Oh, okay. Even yeah. if you're downsampling. Yeah. So it's it, not like video where you're not going to lose quality by downsampling on video, but you will on audio. Yeah, pretty much because it, it it's it just doesn't quite line up right mathematically. Right. So if you you're can video, get, it's just you can good. get very 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 good <laughs> results these days. <laughs> Rock and rolls losing it. He doesn't know. Yeah, you can get great results with resampling again. It's much of a muchness these days because resampling algorithms are a million times better than they ever used to be. Uh, thank you, Timothy. We love you too. Give Adam his dance song. Carlton yeah. dance. I, I can't Carlton dance. I'm not nearly that cool. Um, Peanut butter jelly time. <laughs> Is it time for a close-up again? Uh, my... Nah. Skills have not borne fruit yet. <laughs> it's been decided. The Carlton dance has been chosen. Does that have music? Is... Yeah, not unusual. Oh, yeah, it's Tom <laughs> Jones. None do the world to be loved. But what is the Carlton <laughs> dance? I don't even it's know. That, it's that one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Give me a sec. I'm just in the middle of putting a fan header in. Go on, you. Liberty Jib, but there we go. It's not unusual to have 200 chat messages. Okay. Oh. Round of applause, Cheers. chat. Round of applause, chat. Far too sober for this. Um, so, this is where we should be. Uh, have Like, we Twitch, we have our own. Oh, yeah, can we make a moats now we've got affiliates? Uh, yes. Ooh. Yeah, if you want to work on Twitch emotes, uh, uh, they're a thing. That, that, the Carlton, Adam doing the Carlton dance will may have to be one of our emotes. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, brilliant. Ooh, an HD audio header. I wonder if I can melt the plastic down and recycle it. Have you ever used one of those Yamaha THR amps to record using mics? No! <laughs> Glad I could help. <laughs> Just because you've not been near one? Um, mostly. I mean, they're not that popular, and uh, I mean, they are that po they are popular in homes, but they're not popular with quote unquote serious musicians. And when they are, I just tell them I yeah, leave it at home, and I'll uh, I'll put you through a good amp. <laughs> right there is how you sell ultimate reaper courses. Ultimate reaper courses? What's that? You ask. Well, let Adam tell you. <laughs> Well, in the Ultimate Reaper course, we do some Carlton dances uh, whilst talking utter nonsense. Oh, there's another header for a chassis fan. There we go. Sorry, I'm trying to... Uh... The Ultimate Reaper course, he says with his head in a computer, is something that I spent many months making. And wonderful... Using this machine, actually, a lot of the time. Um, it's all in 4K, and I... Uh, take you through how to Did you output use... it to 4K? Hmm? Did you out output it to 4K? Yeah. Alright. Yeah, there's something like 80 gigabytes of downloads on the Produce, uh, on the Pro Mix Academy website. It's ridiculous. If you want to download it all in 4K, if you've got unlimited bandwidth, you absolutely can. So yeah, if you want to see in absolute excruciating detail... Um, Your face. Yeah, my lovely face. I mean, just go. just watch YouTube for that. Yeah. But Wait, if I can catch him, there you go. 
<laughs> I think that camera might actually be coming through at glorious 720p, but... <laughs> That's just because I was playing with the settings for that cheapy HDMI capture card. There we go. That's USB 3 header plugged in, which is arguably quite important for this computer because it's going to be under the desk, and if we need to plug anything in, it's going to be using these two headers on the front. Uh, Ashley says it's 1080 on Switch. So maybe you did remember to put it back. No, the, 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 the output format in total is 1080, but that camera, I think, is being captured at 720 and up -resed. Ah, right. 15 yeah. likes. Let's, Let's get, get to 200, 200 likes, likes, guys. At 200, 200 likes, likes, Adam will... Oh, God. ...sing the whole of the Carlton dance song and dance it on the table. You're no, not gonna that's get asking likes. for a copyright strike. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the table bit. We're not going to get 200 likes. We're fine. You're safe, he says, before you get raided by Warren. <laughs> yeah. Get a 5150 and EQ it through a drainage pipe. That'll give you the THR sound. Um, see my torch around anywhere? Is it over there? Yeah. That'd be much, much less helpful. Cheers. Ow. If anybody heard that pop on stream, that was my knee. Forgot that chat's there. Hello, chat. Right, this is always my least favourite part of a build, and that's getting these piddly little things on. Sorry, chat, we're going for a walk. Oh, sorry, Thompson. Coffee's going for a walk too, it seems like. Power switch! Don't need to plug all these in, there's a power switch on the motherboard, I'll just get them to take the side off and poke it every time. <laughs> yeah, again, what the hell is that fan? It's not a fan! It's not a fan, it's a passive cooler. Uh, what's your current audio interface? Are you still using the audience stuff? Uh, I am using audience stuff, but not as an interface. Uh, I am using the RME uh, HDSPE Radat as my interface. People don't realise that it's actually three separate things. There are preamps, then there are converters, then there's an interface. And what you probably have at your house, if you have a little box sat on your desk, is actually preamps and converters and an interface. All in one. Uh, my interface, which is literally just the bit that, uh, where the, uh, the computer talks to the audio thing is the RME Radat and that is connected to converters that are in the Audion ASP 880 Move uh, the box, I'll show them hmm? Move hmm? the box a little bit This box? Yeah. That way! So I've got an ASP 880 from Audion uh, What's missing out of the rack is my Archuria Audio Fuse 8 Pre which is going back in there but that's been running everything from my house for a while but that will be making a comeback. And I've got an old Focto, Focto Pry, Focusrite Octo Pre Mark II Dynamic in there, which uh, I'm actually only using the outputs on there right now. For the headphone amps? Yeah. Yeah, I'm driving eight so outputs. That used to be our, our interface and our preamps and everything, didn't it? Just like you say. Well, that was the preamps. That um, We had a Focusrite Liquid Sapphire Oh, yeah, 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 that was, that was the interface. Yeah. yeah, that was the, yeah, so that should do it. There we go. This is the bit that I probably should have done before I installed this. I always forget. Power LED, power switch. Uh, you know what, there we go. I've worked this out, so I'm, I'm not going to plug the LEDs in. Uh, I don't need blinding. Quite a lot with computer builds, actually. I don't even uh, plug in the power LED, the hard drive LED. I try and have it as dark as possible because the LEDs can be very bright. And when you're just trying to focus on mixing, the last thing you need is bright LEDs piercing your eyesight and giving you a headache. 
Where do I always put the reset one in first? Focto pre. <laughs> yes, the Focto pre. Which is probably the sound that I make whenever I hear the preamps on it these days compared to the ev everything else that I have, which is, oh, fucked up, Ree. Um, that'll do. That's in. That's all we really need. Um, um, got a MacBook for on the go. Would you say the best option is a Thunderbolt interface? I was thinking about the Apollo Arrow. They're fairly solid. Uh, don't let yourself get sucked into the UAD ecosystem, though, because they'll get you. Ain't gonna get you. Yeah, the UAD ecosystem I could talk about for, for hours, but I won't. It's not good, don't do it. But their actual interfaces, the actual hardware they make is really nice, good quality stuff. So, it depends what you need. Now, I am short of power. Full power. So, let's start getting these power cables in here, because this power supply, of course, was fully modular. I think this is going to be quite a long stream now. Um, torch, torch. I'm already losing my brain. Torch. Ah, no. Uh, let's do this the easy way. This is on two thumb screws. Goodbye. Okay, there we go. So, that's why they put this on two. So, CPU. There. Motherboard. There. You're just going to leave all those cables sticking out like that? Yeah. I'll probably come back to it at some point, but we've already gone over time really for this. This was supposed to be a half hour thing. Well, it started. Uh, oh, I need one more cable for the hard drives, which I prepared. I have a box full of cables for this thing, which I kept in the third box down in the live room know exactly where they are because you never know when you're going to need them so let's get you in here go on click your little there we go go yeah thunderbolt in and of itself is great thunderbolt as an idea is fantastic but the whole licensing cluster that has gone around on around it has been less than ideal although hopefully we're almost out of the woods there because uh, intel are now doing uh, thunderbolt 4 and usb 4 is coming around and USB 4 should start to integrate Thunderbolt a lot better. Which means that we should see it. And apparently they're changing the licensing so it doesn't cost an absolute ton. Just to have it in your system. That's one of the main problems with Thunderbolt. is ex It's expensive. And it's expensive because Intel uh, charge people a lot of money for the license. There we go. There we go. Backwards it was. There we go. There we go. Let's get that US that fan header back on there. Okay, that's looking nice and clean. So that uh, motherboard one can go there. Oh, this is the worst one. Again, I definitely should have done this before I installed it. Oh, this is going to be uh, hell on a stick.
I'm going to use. Right, I need to go take the dogs out. Um, do you want it being left on that shot or the wide shot? Uh, so well, roughly how long we can? Five, ten minutes. Probably going to be doing this for a while. Yeah. I uh, made a poor choice. I will be uh, back once I've taken my dogs out for a walk. Okay. See you in a minute. Yeah. This is why you're supposed to do some of these cables beforehand because this is the tightest fit of this whole thing. Okay, so this is where my uh, pliers will have to come in handy because I've got to try and get this 8 pin CPU header in here with some relatively gentle movements, relatively, and without slicing my hands up because I need these hands, they're good hands. Yes, the new studio build is coming after this. I'm nearly done. Uh, so as soon as this is in, and I've got the SATA cables plugged in for this, uh, I'm just gonna consider that done and then move on. But I do need to get this in the, otherwise this thing won't turn on. This is the downside of having the biggest cooler in history. Just trying to get your hands in there at all is just a nightmare. It's not going to run toasty at all. Why would I test it? This computer's been running solidly for like three years, four years. This is literally just plugging everything back in. The new machine we will test. The new machine needs setup. The new machine needs test. This is not the new machine for anybody tuning in. It's been on here for more than two years, guys. This is this this was from this is from the Skylake era. Anyone who wants to be an armchair critic, you've not been here and seen it. The most this has ever hit, the most, at full load, 63 degrees. Y'all think y'all know what you're talking about. This is an Intel 6700 quad core. Doesn't generate that much heat. In the wider world, in the big scheme of things. Right, what I'm gonna have to do I suspected I might have to do this, is take out this fan. Looks like a big old magnet. Well, it is a big thing made out of copper. Guess what they make electromagnets out of? by taking that top fan, not out, but just out of the way. Oh, that's loads of room now. That's fine. And now I'm just throwing half the desk around. There we go, definitely should have done this at the start, but mental note for next time. Especially with a fully modular power supply, you can definitely get away with doing stuff like that. You can actually trail a cable off something and plug it in later. There we go. Come on. Gotcha. There we go. There's always a way around. Right, that EATX 12 volts is now 
sufficiently connected, let's get the fan back on by throwing those fan screws around. That was supposed to be sarcastic commentary. There we go. Not literal. We've got parts list for the new studio computer. Um, due to an administrative error on my part, i.e. being an idiot, um, we don't. But we have a four hour stream that Scott was on. Uh, where we list it and by the end of that stream it is literally this setup So if anyone wants to quickly dive onto that stream and Use pcpartpicker.com to reassemble that that would be amazing. That'd be greatly appreciated Yeah, I do need a magnetic tray Yeah, I have uh, a tray for screws over there, but not a magnetic one now, if I built more computers than this, I would definitely just have one as a filter, of course, but I haven't built a PC in a little while, which is why I've been very much looking forward to doing this. There we go. Top thing back on. The top thing so technical yes I know I know exactly what you mean with the magnetic parts right. thank you Eduardo you are my hero right so that connects there nicely that's gonna tuck in they're gonna tuck in never ever use these HD audio things I mean being an audio guy they're an insult I've got nice Serial ATA power right here that I can plug in to these two drives. One and two and three and four. And that can now tuck in the back there. Very reasonably tuck in the back, might I add. That's not going to be a, a struggle for space at all. That's going to be absolutely fine. Plastic food packaging as a parts tray. Yeah, I, I could have done that, but that would have been clever now, wouldn't it? Uh, now, uh, serial ATA data cables. Here's two I prepared earlier. One of these has a right angle. There we go. Try and get the right angle in, in the place where it's not going to be a problem. Get these two on, get them fed through here. Oh, and Adam A7X, I often see people saying they're not balanced and more hi-fi. Would you agree? Absolutely not. They are very, very balanced, I would have thought. Uh, the only issue with them, generally speaking, is that there's a crossover where one kilohertz is slightly sat back a little bit. Um, and in that case, Sonar Works just corrects that for me. Uh, why do I need a GPU? Well, if you've not been following along, uh, good Munda Thor Carlson, this is our live streaming PC. This is not the audio PC, but we do need a GPU for that PC because firstly it's an AMD build which means that we're gonna need a GPU no matter what of some kind because AMD graphics cards uh, what well, AMD CPUs do not have graphics inbuilt at all so you need that it's not a question of how much you want one it's you need one and um, beyond that I will be using an RX 580 in the build because I use several screens and I often have lots of plug-in windows open and at that point that can start to affect low latency through OpenGL calls and processor scheduling which is something that's going to be a video for another day but yeah that now has the back on that is 
one finished live streaming PC with some very nice cable management. I'm happy with that. Um, so there's, there's extra USB ports at the back uh, so that the uh, USB capture cards can have their own data bus um, as well as any peripherals. I might be able to put one on there, but then I can have the Blackmagic capture uh, being the, the new Blackmagic 4K capture card for the production 4K camera, uh, I could run this camera, which is a pocket uh, pocket cinema camera, to this Ava Media capture card, which is nice and smooth. Uh, I've got three HDMI little capture cards, which seem to have about three frames of latency on, which is really quite reasonable. And yeah, no Velcro, no messing around and that's got eight terabytes of uh, eight terabytes of spinning rust storage just for the live stream just in case we need to stitch a live stream together later if uh, if this, the internet goes down for any number of reasons and there's a, a 1050 ti in there which should be enough to keep the live stream going but that's all silent I do believe that's dropped. Mm. Okay, that's worth looking into here. That's definitely worth looking into. It would appear that... Oh no! It's, a, it's an illusion. It looked like one card had actually dropped into another, but it hasn't. That's, that's the 1050 Ti's actual chipboard that's sat on its own cooler. It was just a, a trick of the light for a minute there. Yeah, well, the GPU in there is what I used to have in the Studio PC, which was a Palette 1050 Ti Calm X, K-A-L-M-X. Uh, their Calm X range are entirely passive, so if you want completely silent computer builds, you can do that. But the most they go to is about 75 watts of heat on one of those for obvious reasons. You get too much heat generation and fanless designs just can't keep up. How much is the Blackmagic Pocket Camera? Uh, that's the old Blackmagic Pocket Camera and knew they were about £800. Um, I definitely wouldn't recommend getting one of those. Uh, if you get one of the new Blackmagic Pocket Cameras, they are significantly more expensive but they are much, much nicer. And I was th considering getting one of those myself. Uh, uh, I was actually considering getting uh, a Blackmagic Pocket uh, 4.6K, or it might have been 4K. And in the end, I decided against it. Uh, I will be upgrading cameras at some point soon, but I don't want a main camera that films ProRes anymore. I want one that does a more compressed format just because even though I can color grade and, oh, this is nice. One second. Ah, uh, yeah. Sorry, what was I talking about? Um, that completely uh, threw me off. Yeah, let's get these on, get that wiped, and get this out of the way. But yeah, it's a very clean build. But this is pretty much the build that was the studio computer for the last three or four years. And people moan and go, oh, it's going to generate loads of heat. It, it doesn't. I can tell you that from watching hardware monitor whilst absolutely killing it. And yeah, would Sonar Works be the best investment to make sure everything's balanced? If your speakers are great and if your room is properly treated, then yes. It's definitely for me the final piece of the puzzle, but it's it should come third in that list. If your room's not properly treated and if your speakers are under par, then it's like putting a band-aid on a you know a missing leg. Okay, we have a finished machine. And from the camera change you may be able to guess that Liam is back.
Yeah, Simbo wanted to come downstairs with me because this is usually the time where we, me and him hang out. So he was like, I want to come. I was like, mm, mm. No, no, there's too much going on, mate. You'll knock the cameras. I would spend the entire stream sneezing as well. <laughs> but yeah, Simba's a good boy. He's but, a very good boy. But yeah, unfortunately me and him, we're not particularly compatible on the sneeze scale. Let's just stand this up for the final peel. One of the best bits. If you can get hold of the thing. There we go. One finished streaming PC. Now, now it's time for something you've all been waiting for. After this quick intermission, I think it's time. Whiskey time? Yeah. If you want to grab yourself a glass. Oh, I could have got Ash to bring me one down. If you can grab an, uh, a glass full of ice, that'd be brilliant. Thank you. So, quick intermission before we start on the studio computer. We're going to make a couple of old fashions. So. Get some ingredients. Also need a. Also need a knife, but I think I've got a knife somewhere. Yes, you are welcome. Yes, if if anybody needs hydration, get yourself some hydration at this point, because it's good to look after yourselves. But we are going to get a nice a nice old fashioned cocktail going. So, waiting for Liam to come back, but I'm going to begin this with Angostura bitters. Bitters are awesome, they smell weird. Oh. It's 44.7% alcohol by volume, but you wouldn't drink it on its own because it's, well, poor. Oh. It's really something. I'm going to start peeling this orange. I might even eat a little bit of orange. But yeah. There we go. I would usually do some really nice strips of uh, orange peel for the, uh, there we go. More live streams. I do two or three a week. <laughs> yes, come, come and see the live streams. Right, so I've got some nice bits of orange peel. Uh, Liam's getting the ice. You're supposed to use regular gum, uh, plain cane sugar syrup. I like to do this with uh, golden syrup. It's just a weird uh, particularization of mine. And so we're going to get a nice cocktail going. Now I can let mine melt over ice. And we'll begin to unbox the really, really nice components. And I will get a uh, uh, a box to set the setup on. Touch the uh, touch the lucky uh, degaussing preamps. <laughs> How's everybody doing in chat? Y'all got yourself a nice drink. Y'all uh, set up well. I bet this is slightly anticlimactic so far. You thought, right? Let's do it. Wait, what? <laughs> there we go. Didn't want to pour the bitters out but that smells lovely but yes tonight's old-fashioned is going to be done with Woodford Reserve Woodford Reserve being one of my favorite bourbon whiskies ah yes uh, do hit the bell everybody the bell icon because it even if you subscribed it quite often won't tell you if we're going live or if a video has dropped did you know we've done about 17 videos this month? 
That is to say, a video has come out at least every other day. We've been very productive. But YouTube doesn't seem to want to tell people that, which is really quite annoying. Aha! Hero. So, are you going for just straight bourbon or whole hog? Um. Without a cherry. No cherry, okay. So, as I was saying, for anyone who doesn't know an old fashioned, you know what an old fashioned is, don't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can have smoky old fashions in yeah. the uh, casino. Yeah, I've been thinking of uh, getting myself a, a blowtorch and some nice apple wood or something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Angus Jura bitters, uh, a touch of uh, syrup, but only a touch. There we go. There we go. And as I was saying, I, I prefer golden syrup. It's just got a certain something. Je ne sais quoi. Uh, je ne sais quoi, yes. There we go. Uh, orange peel. Mine's going to have the glacé cherry. My favourite bit when it's full of bourbon. And feels like I'm going to have to wash my hands, but... A generous double Woodford Reserve. And then just... Oh, thank you. That definitely helps. In 2020, always have anti-back wipes with you. Yeah. <laughs> and then you just stir and stir and stir. Stir yours first because I can stir mine all night. <laughs> That's the one with the cherry in it. Oh, I thought you could stir mine first. I said I was going to, which is why it takes a while to stir. But... There you go. <laughs> Golden syrup's a bit sticky, but yeah. Cheers. So, nice clean surface. Oh yeah. Whoa. I do That's like good for reserve. Yeah, it's the good stuff. This is very good. Mmm. Mmm. Cheers everybody at home. Now I see the same glass as well, is it different? Smooth, I know yours has got something on it. Smooth and mellow. Something, something. I think it might have been a Jack Daniels glass at some point. Oh yeah, it's good. Mmm. Good stuff. Just that little bit of something just changes it, yeah. Anywho, um, I've now wiped the surface clean as well because that's going to dry in a second. Now, I have a box full of stuff. Now, in front of me, I have a box that earlier today had uh, an Audient ASP 880 in. Now it's got an Audient ASP 800 in it. <laughs> and I'm being incredibly extravagant as using it as the place to set up my motherboard. <laughs> because why not? So, let's, I say the word so too much. Pull our motherboard out and. Hmm. Start building the PC before you have too much fun. <laughs> well, yes. Fun. The drink was to celebrate the beginning of the adventure. Where are the cigars? Well, one, you don't need to but secondly, yeah. um, we're in a sealed recording studio. The only ventilation we have are those, you can see them actually, they're the intake or the outtake? They're the intake, and then to the left is the outtake that comes in from the yeah. outside. Um, so this place is pretty much hermetically sealed. Yeah, because the downstairs is completely sealed, like you can please see there's like, not even any light from the ceiling. Um, because it's all completely sealed. Mm. So, uh, yeah, by law, we need to have some ventilation down here, otherwise we will just suffocate. Yeah. Soundproofing comes at a cost, guys. <laughs> to the level we do, definitely. Yeah. This place ain't no joke. Everybody thinks, because the camera's looking this way and that there's some foam on this wall, that we must just be in some kind of shed. Right. <laughs> the, the assumption. 
in the recording studio world is, oh, that foam doesn't do anything. Therefore, we don't know what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Well. <laughs> hmm. Yes, this floating room is definitely uh, useless. Yes, absolutely. So, 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 so. Ooh, this is nice. It's got bracing around the uh, the main main graphics slot. You may say it's tough. It's the ASUS Tough Gaming motherboard. So, so. As I said, I need to stop saying that. <laughs> but it's my subconscious way of trying to poke myself. Like, come on, yeah, <laughs> get moving. It's time for the thirty nine hundred XT. Dun 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 dun. dun. Let's get this in. How does the rest of the studio look like? Uh, there's a studio tour video on the front page of the YouTube. There is, and. Even if we were to give you a little tour, today is not the best of days because the lights are not on. But yeah, um, we have a large live room, we have a separate vocal booth, we, the, the live room goes, the control room goes further back than you can see on camera, of course. Yeah, we have a full, completely acoustically treated, floating, lovely, lovely. In a bit, in what was used to be an old beer cellar, mm. so we are below ground. Um, there is infinity amounts of uh, rock and stone and soil on either side of these walls. Yes, it goes on forever. But only about a foot and a half before the floor above, which is why we had to do so much work to soundproof it. Mm. It's not the lights, it's the dirt. No, believe me, it's the lights. It's not the tidiest it's been in here, that I will admit to, because we're in the middle of redoing a lot of things. I have to find the tiny, tiny, tiny little... Uh... And also, obviously, clients aren't coming in at the moment, so it's easier to just put crap on the floor when you know no one's coming in but yourself. Yeah, it, when I'm doing a lot of filming, I kind of this place ends up a little bit like a teenager's bedroom, but generally, at the end of the day, I do try and tidy up, but then, like Liam said... Because Translation nobody's... chat. Generally, at the end of the day, means five minutes before we have clients in. Or when he has one of those days where he feels like cleaning and just blitzes the whole place. Uh, yeah, I do that sometimes. I just come in and go, this will not do. <laughs> <laughs> Blah! Okay, so the 3900 XT is in. I feel a lot better about that. Um, it's time for part three of the manual counter. And I always uh, check the manual for motherboards, uh, page 2-6, for memory slots, because there is no set agreed standard, unfortunately, about uh, where memory modules should go. It's really quite annoying, but I have two, uh, two RAM uh, sticks, and I need to know where they go. Uh, CPU installation, DIM installation. This is just pictures. That didn't help at all. Come on. Uh, well, that was useless, and then it goes into BIOS setup. Memory configurations, system <coughs> memory. <laughs> There's a video on Reddit. There's a sign that says, "Caution: Swan is aggressive," <laughs> and the swan's ripping down the sign. <laughs> swan is aggressive. <laughs> Whoa. Right there we go. Yeah, see, it's got A one, A two, B one, and B two. But apparently if you've got two DIMM slots, it wants you to put them in A2 and B2, not one. Right. See, this is the thing that motherboard manufacturers just can't decide between themselves. Um, but the next thing to get out of this box is our Corsair Vengeance 
LPX, which is a 32 gig kit and is 3600 megahertz. Pretty damn fast. But uh, yeah, I decided not to go for faster memory than that because if you start to go faster than that, on any system you start to risk instability. And so I figured one of the best things to do, especially for audio guys in terms of performance, is match the Infinity fabric speed to the RAM speed. Some people say, oh, it's to double the RAM speed, but it's not because DDR stands for double data rate. When they say it's going at 13, when they say it's going at 3600 megahertz, it's actually going at 1800 megahertz, which is half that, but you get twice the amount of data through. So it's a bit of a marketing exercise in that way. So having them line up perfectly uh, is good for you. So where's, where's that picture gone? So it wants me to put these in the light. Oh. 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 Yeah. You alright? Yeah. Oop. Oh. What about the oop? Oh. oh, manual count needs to go up. Manual count, yes. Hey, I'd, 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 I'd quite like to use that PS2 port. I have nothing against PS2 ports. They're actually better than USB for uh, keyboard and mouse because they're, uh, they support, by default, things like N-key rollover, which means you can mash loads of keys at once. If which... you don't have a control key, you have a strong key, S-T-R-G. I do, I have a Sturg key. Sturg. Sturm und Drang. You have alt though. Yeah. Alt and Sturm. Alternative. That's kind of Russian. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> right, so it's time for... He said it again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's... Do, you a, do you have a slow counter? <laughs> God, you, I'd break it. It's time for a massive cooler again, because I like massive coolers. But this time it's a Noctua D15S. This thing's going to be huge. Do you want to chuck some stuff off that off the desk onto it, one of those boxes? Isn't it? Just as... Good question. It's Just... a little messy, that's all. It is a bit the messy. People are to see what's going on. You don't just have to point the camera at the thing then, are you? <laughs> I know, but I need the wide shot for this bit. The cooler's so big you need the wide shot. Yeah. Uh, that's the mesh if I use a guide. That's the MD box that can all go away for a while. Oh, oh. oh, he caught it. He caught it, chat. He caught it. I'll probably need half of that. So I I'll like PS2 over USB. Why? Yeah, I was saying I prefer PS2 over USB because oh, right. for, for keyboard and mouse. Because right. it's designed literally with a direct memory access, so it's... It's got things like N-key rollover. A lot of USB keyboards, if you mash more than about four keys, it won't register them all. Whereas PS2, yeah, it automatically will. As an audio producer, quite often, you're pressing quite a few yeah, different keys. if you keys. use a, a decent mechanical keyboard, then Ghost will be on it anyway, so you won't have an issue with that. How much are you paying for that? I don't know. How much you pay for your keyboard? However I like. You can, yeah. pay, you can pay a fiver for a PS2 keyboard. Yeah. Well, I can pay 190 quid for a keyboard. <laughs> yes, you can. And it has RGB on it, so I win. <laughs> right, so this uh, this CPU cooler is massive. Plastic bag next to the motherboard is Savage Jerky. No, that is not Savage Jerky. That is uh, that is a packet of Cryonaut, which is my favourite thermal paste. Very, very good thermal paste. And I've got a little bit left over because I've been using it in everything. You know, barbecue, chicken. <laughs> Ooh. Some serious cardboard. And that's another serious cooler. What size of that bad boy? It's a monster. Yeah. yeah put it on the uh, close-up shot. Compared to the, the motherboard, it's it's almost as big as the previous one. Is it as good as the previous one? Arguably better. That's big. 
No, but then not much space, please. it was designed with that in mind. I think that yeah, it's supposed to go kind of there, or is it there? I have to, I have to consult the manual. Is that a fourth manual? I've not looked at it yet. Okay. If we get to five manuals chat, what are we getting to do? <laughs> the memory is low profile, but you don't need low profile with a D15S because the S model, they actually cut bits out at the bottom so you can have tall RAM and it won't won't hit. I don't know if yeah. So there's there's a cutout here so you don't mm -hmm. have to uh, have you don't have to have low profile RAM with this thing. Hello Nick. How are you? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, so even the, the, the non-S version, like Eduardo was saying, which is the, the double fan monster of a thing, that one uh, has... Uh, why is there a picture of it? Picture of it in action. Um, so, uh, yes, they are very, very, very quiet. And if you need them to do cooling, they can do cooling. Oh, they gave me some MX4 from Arctic Cooling for free. I'm just going to put that back. I'm good. Thanks. And the D15S doesn't come with an AM4 mounting kit. But you can separately buy an AM4 mounting kit. So that's what I did. Because I knew I wanted it. Does this count as a manual? I think it does. Yeah. That's for. Okay, so. Okay, so far. Hello, Blue Velvet. Hello. Blue Velvet. Bet you've never heard that one before. <laughs> okay, so what does this say? Step one, fixing the fastening brackets to the cooler. This could get a little complex. The following cooler models already use blah blah or compatible fastening brackets. Yes, indeed they do. So if you use one of these models, skip these, this step and proceed to the next one. Happy days. Remove the stock retention module. So first remove the motherboards. That's not the right. I don't know what you're doing, Muppet. There we go. Oh, it looks like I've just seen the big strip over here where the NVMe drive goes. It's got a big heat sink over there. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Oh, I haven't heard that song in ages. United States of whatever. Oh god, I even forgot that existed. Yeah. Went to see my friend and he said, hey, that's cool. Because this is my United States of whatever. Essentially very apt. Uh, I kind of like that song because it was just stupid. Okay, so that's the back plate. Egg on. Font a lot. Oh, so I do want the stock back plate. Okay. I can do that. Make sure that stock back plate goes back. There we go. Back plate is back. Alright! Do, 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 do. 
Do do do. Orientation. Something something. Stuff and what's it? Uh, hmm. So if I have. Right, I think I want the short ones. Okay. And yes, cabling, yes indeed. I will remember cabling this time. Uh, I will look at the power supply. I don't know if it's fully modular. Yeah, it's fully modular, so that's that's good. <laughs> propaganda. It's what manks do when they're really looking at something. Yeah, they have a propaganda. <laughs> So apparently these go. Good day in. and good morning from Australia. Hello. Good day. Good morning. Hello. How do? Right. I don't want to go too far with this. He says already having gone too far with this because that's supposed to go on there. Uh oh. Go on, there we go. Gotta love custom mountain brackets. So fiddly. I hate doing the CPU part of the computer. Why? I don't know, I just... It's the part that requires... Like... I don't know, everything else just clicks into place perfectly, where CPUs... Sometimes need a little bit of elbow grease, just slightly. Oh, that used to be an AMD thing, definitely. Yeah, with the AM3 and AM2 mount, where you'd be like, Kunk. yeah, like, or even with like my my Intel one, it's not a lot. It's just more than any other part of it. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Just a bit of pressure, and you just feel like if I'm gonna fuck it up, this is where it's gonna happen. Yeah, I know that one. But I did spend the extra money on the uh, scan the computer builder that we buy parts off. Uh, they do like an insurance thing where if you manage to mess up your components on install, they just replace them. Oh really? Yeah. Cost a bit more. Cost about 40 quid for this build, I think it was. But if Which I is still less than getting it built by them, so. Yeah. Because they charge somewhere in the region between 150 and 200 depending on what you're doing Woof. to build it well they I mean they burning test it as well and everything afterwards so mm. yeah that's true and they, they do know how to do things like testing uh, overclock profiles and that kind of thing uh, which I'll be doing a tiny little bit of but generally speaking especially for audio builds I do tend to uh, not do very much of that. Okay, so just a test fit. Um, looks good. So... Okay, I have to take out the fan so I can get to the screws for this bit. Yeah, I see what you mean about this being a bit of a, a faff now. But yeah, that's just the metal on this cooler. Ah. He's big boy. That's just the metal. It is literally the size of my head. Now, um, shouldn't have done that. Or oh, should not have done that. Just because now, I can't remember which way around I'm putting it. But yeah, I'm putting it so that the heat exhausts out the back. Burning test? Don't be daft. It's not a piece of leather. As long as I know that I can do a Cinebench or uh, that kind of thing with it and it's not going to crash, I'll be confident from there. Because it's not as if, it's not as if, 
I'm going to be pushing for like extreme overclocking with high voltage or anything like that. All I'm going to be doing is the smallest timing tweak. Now, put a little bit of a P, probably quite a large P of uh, thermal paste on there. That's maybe a little more than I intended to put on there, but it's still not. It's not loads. Now. Oh, right, yeah, so this thing's actually off site, one sided. Don't know if you can see that on there. But it's um this this cool is actually one sided so that it gets out of the way of the graphics card. So it can still be really big, but it doesn't overhang that PCI slot, because if I do it the other way, mm -hmm. it's kind of the wrong way. But yeah, all you really want to do at this point is just slop it down. And that doesn't look like it fits. Oh, boy. Why doesn't that look like it fits? Have I put them on? I've put them on backwards. Great. Yep, I read the manual and somehow didn't read the manual properly. What a complete and utter wally. Looks like I'll be doing that again. Well, good to know I was getting a nice even spread on my thermal compound. Yeah, sorry, no, Eduardo, no. Um, you, you do have to care about which way around the D15S goes because the S is one-sided. Uh, the, the S is actually an offset model. Um, so if you do put it on the wrong way around, it completely covers your graphics card's uh, PCI slot. And because I was getting ahead of myself thinking about that, I wasn't paying attention to the fact that these look quite nice when they form a nice kind of circle, but, but that puts them too far out. Should have done a, a better bi eye test fit there, but now I am thoroughly aware. Go on. Right, and back on, because that's nice spread thermal paste, plop. And that now fits perfectly. And I can get my screwdriver down on that side. A little bit on that side. There we go, make sure it catches, because if it doesn't catch, there ain't no screwing down happening at all. There we go. That'll do nicely. Thank you, AM4 Mounting Kit from Noctua. And I want the air to go out that away. I want this to be mounted over here and over here. There we go. All done. And where's the C which one's the CPU fan header? CPU fan, CPU op. CPU fan. There we go. Right, next up, I think, is we're gonna look at Motherboard bending. Nah, that's fine. That's that's the the box bending. There we go. So, I'm gonna take a guess that if I take these two off, 
that's where the NVMe SSD is going to go. Oh, look. All right, so. What's next out of my box of goodies? That would be a 970 Evo, one terabyte. Very, very nice drives. Uh, I've come to trust Samsung for data more than most recently because they have their own chip fabs and their, uh, their known quality is a lot higher than the other brands who kind of use third parties to do a lot of this stuff. Okay, so tiny, tiny little thing. How many heat pipes does that cooler have to the cold plate? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six heat pipes that go off in both directions. Let's get that in there nice and gently. So it's a 2280 rather than a 22110. Uh, there's no there's no screw in there by default, which means that they must be in the motherboard box. Where did I put the motherboard box? Where is my mind? It's the second biggest box and I can't find it. What have we done with it? It's over there. I've taken everything out of it, but... Of course I moved it all over here. Oh, here's the tiny, tiny little ones. <laughs> Put the SSD on the other slot. Well, why? That one's got a heatsink inbuilt. Why would I not do that? You don't give me a good reason. There a second. Faster speed, they're identical. They are PCI Express four times. This is a PCI Express three times drive, which means that that is not something I need to care about. Now, let's just check the motherboard layout. Let's just refer to the manual rather than just be uh, taking what people in chat say. Socket three, M.21, socket three, one sixteen. Yep, the M two two socket, the one I was going to choose supports PCI Express 4.0 times 4 mode and the other one doesn't. Yeah.
This is definitely a call for my smaller screwdriver set. This is definitely a precision bit here. Okay, that is nice and solid. I can take the back off the thermal adhesive here because like I said, this has a thermal heatsink and that's more important to me than it being a little faster, which it wasn't anyway. Heat management is very important. Oh, come on. That looks like it originally went the other way. Looks like maybe I was supposed to swing this out. But then if I swung it out, how was I supposed to get to the thermal adhesive? Yeah. There we go. One NVMe drive installed. Are there non-thermal heat sinks? Well, I mean, you could have a heat sink made out of soup. Hmm. Wouldn't be a very good one, but it would exist. Oh, torch is still on. Cry or not, your job here is finished. Thank you very much, sir. I'll see you at the next build. Uh, is there parts list somewhere? Uh, Eduardo in chat, did you manage to put together that list that we were talking about earlier? Whilst I sip my uh, old fashioned. Cheers everybody. Oh yes, that's good. Right, so I have my memory installed, I have my drive installed. I have my big scary cooler installed. What else is left in this box? Oh, and there's the, the power supply, of course. There is the uh, RX 580 graphics card. I think that's it. It's actually a pretty lean and mean build, this. It is going to have the uh, RME Radat installed as well. So it's actually going to have quite a few of these slots filled when we get to that. But in the well, meantime... The graphics, no graphics. Hmm? Graphics. Yeah, graphics. Graphics here. But then the RME is going to take up three slots as well, so that's five slots taken. Okay. Oh, it's on the Discord as well. Fantastic. Thank you very much, guys. That's massively appreciated. So I'm going to put this to the side for a second because I'm going to open up this power supply because it's fully modular. So what I'm going to do is pull out those cables that we were talking about before that um, were a real pain to get in in the previous case. And I'm going to install them on this board before it gets lowered into position. That should say five minutes of stream. Yes, uh, your radar will only be two slots. I have purchased the timecode expansion because I, I like to uh, run the timing for all my interfaces off the word clock inputs rather than the ADAP because I always found that ADAP could be a little bit flaky in terms of timing. But then when I did that, I was running much longer ADAT cables than I am now. I was running like six meter cables, which is too long, really. Uh, all right, nice power lead. Ooh, you actually get like a, a gentleman's gym bag full of power cables. 
Yeah, yeah the length to go to these days to try and impress. Yeah. So I'm going to take the power supply itself out. Even that's in a bag. Why, why, why do they put power supplies in like a Hessian sack? Power supplies in like a, a blackened potato bag. What good does that actually do anyone? I mean, yeah, keeps it two thumbs fresh. Okay, so let's uh, ditch the box for this. Now, the build shouldn't be too bad for this one anyway because it's a relatively open case, this uh, rack mount case. But yeah, because this is, again, fully modular where... Thank you, Blue Velvet. Yes, thank you. We'll see you soon. Um, there, there's no... Oh, there's zero RPM mode, which I'll switch on, on the inside. Zero RPM mode means that it doesn't run the fan at all unless it feels like it really, really needs to for some reason. It doesn't mean it's just off. Hmm? It doesn't mean it's just off. It, it, no, it's just, it is just off, but if it gets above, I don't know, 70 degrees or something like that, it'll, it'll kick in. But otherwise, it'll just be just on low. And I'd just rather everything in the system, wherever possible, just not be on at all unless it's needed. In that case, I should, in a reasonable mix, still have a silent computer. And that's why I got the specific uh, 580 that I got, because it's got a zero RPM fan mode. That's why I got that power supply, because it's got a zero RPM fan mode. I got the Noctua fan here, because it runs at something ridiculous, like 600 RPM. Yeah, well, every cable over six meters will become an antenna, unless it's optical. And of course, ADAT being optical, that's one of the best things about optical cables is there is no electromagnetic interference because light doesn't pick up electromagnetic interference. Uh, having said that, ADAT moves over Toslink and Toslink was never really designed for professional applications and then Alesis kind of hijacked it in the early 90s, late 80s and it all kind of went downhill from there. So, uh, the reason I pulled this, there's another one for the soak count, uh, I pulled out <laughs> the, uh, the power supplies cable. Oh, the soak count. I thought you said the manual count. Oh, I've been looking at the manual, you can probably add one on there as oh, well. Oh, you looked at the manual. I, I looked at the manual to make sure the, the memory was in the correct advised slots. In... Ying. Oh yeah, th yeah, that that was a new manual. That counts. Just making sure we're not adding the same manual twice. Mm. Sure. Well, yeah. Dante is your friend. Well, Dante is nice, but Dante is not your friend if you're worried about your wallet at any point. Any ever. any reason my thirty two over sixty four? Hmm. Thirty two gig over sixty four gig. Yeah. You don't need sixty four. It's a lot of money. You don't need that much RAM for audio. And if you run but less what, RAM for audio... But what if you want to have two Chrome tabs open? Yeah. Yeah, no Chrome tabs for you. I'm sorry, but you can use 64 gig of RAM quite easily if you've got the internet open. But hey, <laughs> if you do it like fucking Chrome, man. Well, not wrong. But yeah, um, like I was saying, getting back to... Uh, back on track. Uh, if you... Uh, only use two of the four available RAM slots, you can generally find RAM kits that run much more efficiently uh, with lower latency and quite often at higher speeds as well, which means that then the speed of the memory can be brought up to match the frequency of the processor's internal uh, workings, especially for AMD, it's called the Infinity Fabric. And if you can get the RAM speed to match the Infinity Fabric, you'll have a much better time. It's like having gears that don't quite work on a car. If you can have a setup where everything is just perfectly tuned, everybody has a happier day. Uh, PCIe, PCIe. Hmm. Is that the hard drive? What? That? Sort of thing. Yeah. yeah, the hard drive's under that. That's a heat spreader. I'm not actually seeing an NVE drive. 
Oh, All right. Desktop. Yeah, yeah, they're tiny. They're teeny tiny. It, it, it stops there. That's it. Because mm. Asha's got an external one. All right. In a case, which is sick. It's like this big and it's a terabyte. Right. USB three, USB C. Oh yeah. Insane. That's a terabyte and it's the it's the size of a stick of gum. Yeah. So you put a case around it, it gets a little bit bigger. So yeah. you see the edge on the side. Yeah. But yeah, it's absolutely sick. So she's got a little MacBook Pro, the thirteen inch one. Yeah. And then a terabyte attachment to it, <laughs> and it's like still easy, like so light. It's amazing. You put it in your pocket. It's brilliant. That's cool. Uh, right, that's a Molex connector. Don't need that. That's PCI Express. I'll probably need that. Uh, that's another PCI Express. I don't need two of them for a single graphics card. I found a hard drive that had like all the old studio stuff, like from, from like when we did all the, the Groupons and everything. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's got like all the sessions from that period, like 2013, 12 or something. Yeah. I think I've got a backup of that somewhere as well. It's like, it might be your, like, because it's from the big box hard drives. Hmm. Don't suppose you did find the uh, Odd Squad Maceto stuff? Not yet. No. I'm still going through stuff, I'm not found it yet. I reckon it'll be in one of the drives up there, though. Yeah. We actually started that as Odd Squad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Interesting point of fact about this uh, motherboard is it's got an 8 pin for the CPU and an additional four pin. Uh, now, I, my power supply doesn't actually have another connector to connect that extra four pin. Uh, that's not a problem. The extra four pin there will be for like, if you're overclocking and doing stuff like that. With this being the X570 motherboard, uh, if you're pulling like 300, 400 watts through a processor, that needs to come through there, uh, which yeah, that's that's very much an option. The board does look a bit like that. I know someone said it in chat. But... Yeah. It's ever so slightly. It does a little bit. Hmm. Well, despite how it may have appeared, I didn't actually pull on the uh, the uh, things very often and the very hard, and that was on a cardboard box. And even if I did tighten them all the way, that's actually tightening through a backplate. And the backplate, if I show you the back, means that no matter how hard I would have uh, done that, which again, I didn't, uh, that wouldn't have caused a bend on the rest of the board. Now, hopefully that's nothing to worry about. And when it goes in the case, it's not going to be vertically mounted anyway. Uh, there's not going to be any further vertical force. It's going to sit like this for the rest of its working life unless it becomes an extreme PC in a few years. Mm -hmm. So that should be. So what graphics card did you get? Uh, I got, I think it's a Gigabyte RX 580. Yeah, I off. An RX 580. <laughs> it was Nvidia. Oh, um. In normal speak. <laughs> in normal speak. <laughs> uh, like a 1060-ish. Right. That kind of thing. It's kind of mid-tier, but mid-high tier. Um, it's a few years old at this point, it's not the latest and greatest, but for an audio guy, I got this because... Um, actually, let's let's put this in the case first, uh, and then install the graphics card, otherwise it's starting to get a bit unwieldy. Um, so, yeah, the 580 is a known quantity. Um, there is always the, the argument that, that sound guys don't need a graphics card, but uh, it might have been an 8 gig 570, I don't remember at this point. I may have just gone ahead and ordered a 580. Uh, we'll soon find out when I open this up, but I, I just needed something that was uh, relatively modern but relatively stable and something that I knew I could use uh, with no worry, no repercussion and something where the drivers would be much better suited to audio and unfortunately Nvidia's graphics cards, as great as they are for things like gaming and video editing and live streaming actually, so that's almost all bases uh, for audio, they get in the way at the moment with their, their drivers, their DirectX drivers, 
they currently have quite a lot of inbuilt latency which can cause problems with audio and so that makes it a problem for us okay now let's drop this in with the cables oh no 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 almost forgot the uh, uh, IO plate let's get the IO on there oh I've done it so many times yeah almost managed to do it then almost almost a lot of super high end motherboards now actually have the IO plate pretty much pre installed so if you spend more than £200 on a motherboard that's now Largely a thing of the past, but not today. So let's get this bird boy in here. There we go. Mmm, 7.1 audio that I will never use. Won't even use 2.0 of it. It could get in the sea. It could be destroyed in a fire. And I would not miss it. Okay. Let's get rid of the cardboard! Oh, the reminds himself has transformers in so that's heavy okay hello david spacer riser standoff it has nine uh spacers rises whatever you want to call them in there i just checked them all uh you may not have quite seen off camera but two of them had come off with the previous board i just reattached them before dropping the board in so fear not this is on several standoffs I may be thick, but there's a limit. Now, let's get some of these nice new screws. I bought myself a nice pack of, uh, of extra screws. So if there was anything that I needed that I didn't have, I would have a choice of proper threads, proper tops, everything that I could possibly need. Now let's drop all of this in here. It's going to look a little bit weird, this build, because there's, there's not much goes on in this case. It's a very kind of bare looking case because NVMe drives these days mean that your boot drives are very often just not on the same... You don't see them. You know, it's not the same kind of visual thing that it used to be. I've always been annoyed by I.O. plates that have the kind of squish against the motherboard and make everything push back a little bit. There we go. Uh, is that a four space rack case? One, two, three. I think it's four unit, yeah. Um, and the other thing is I will be running this with no lid on the case. This is going to be a completely open build. As it was before, uh, another reason why I don't need loads of case fans because this is a completely open top because this slides into the uh, the bottom of my rack here and there's a big airspace behind the console uh, which it looks closed off from the front from the camera side but from the back it's a big goodbye big open thing so there's lots and lots and lots of airflow so yeah. I get all sorts of comments uh, on the channel from people who only see things from a certain camera angle. And I, I sympathise because what you see, you respond to and you panic and you think like, I get a lot of comments on things like, those monitors are far too high for your ears. Yeah, from that camera angle. 
from where I'm sat, they are perfect. It's all a matter of perspective. Mm-hmm. You know, like people saying, oh, well, you can't put a passive heat sink in that rack, it'll have no airflow. So if I showed you a camera shot of the back, you wouldn't worry, but then you'd see the, the wires and, well, mm-hmm. let's not. <laughs> If, if there's one thing that, that is perpetually a little bit of a mess, it's uh, studio cabling, because I think when I first ha- installed all the cables, they were nice and neat. Oh, they were. And then we changed it. Oh, the purple ones, aren't they? Uh, yeah, the ones that we sold it ourselves. Yeah, they were great. Yeah, there's only a few of them still left alive. Mm. <laughs> but yeah. It was eight years ago. Yeah, that's true. Well, by the time we did the studio, it was probably more like six, but... Yeah. It was a long time. Now, keyboard lock switch. Definitely don't need that plugged in. Uh, oh, all that faffing around. There was actually like a pre-header mm-hmm. that I had from the previous motherboard mm-hmm. that I, I didn't know I had that. So that could have gone on. Um, I was faffing around in the previous motherboard. Uh, oh, were you trying to do any side notes put the lights on? Yeah. And the reason that I'd done it all previously is I had one of these nice little things that yeah. fit it perfectly. And I shouldn't have pulled all these off because it looks like... I was like... going to say, why have you done that? <laughs> well, generally, manufacturer to manufacturer, they're all different, but they're both Asus boards. <laughs> ah. Chad, do you want wide shot or do you want me to try and get the close shot for this now? Because it's a biggish case so you can't really see deep down. Could you move the box a little bit further on the table? That way? Yeah. Now well, yeah. well, you can see a little bit more. Alright. Right. Let's try a close chat. Right, hard drive LED. I don't mind the hard drive LED and power LED in this case because they end up going behind tinted glass, so I'm vaguely aware of them, but I don't get blinded. Actually, we don't get that much dust down here because, again, there's no real airflow from outside and it's all sealed. So you'd be surprised, actually, how undusty it really is. Yeah, it it doesn't really get dusty. I mean, I do need to, every couple of months, give it a bit of a wipe round, but compared to what you would... It's sticky because of bands. Yeah. With their subway. There's a subway just down the road, so they all go to the subway and leave all their crap everywhere. Yeah, that's pretty mingy. Okay, so those are in. Uh, oh good, we've got some USB 2 headers, which is nice because I actually use the USB 2 on the front of this machine a lot. <laughs> Probably far more than I should, but I use them because they're always rock solid stable and I, I plug things like my eye lock into the USB on the front of the case because uh, then I can see it and I can just whip it out and take it with me on the way home. Okay, and then I've got that rogue agent there. Two cables to power the board. One ring to rule them all. And I'm gonna put the uh, hard drive and DVD drive caddy back in completely empty, because I'm not gonna be using any of them. But what I do use currently is I've got two USB 3 uh, sockets which will be attached to a header right here okay that's gone in nice and easy uh, looks like we're good oh there's RGB headers and things like that in here that I will never use uh, let's find the four, there we go, four screws that go right down in here. Because, yeah, I did have two DVD writer drives in here once upon a time, but it turns out that they were causing major latency issues. So I took them out, and the latency issues went away. So now I only have an external DVD writer that only gets plugged in when I need it and gets unplugged 
which means that latency hiccups haven't been happening. And that's been great. So, where did this power supply go? That one, with a zero RPM fan mode. Edna mode. Goes in there. Just slide that round. Da 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 da. Oh, whiskey, yeah, good idea. Cheers, everybody. Really shouldn't be waving that over the computer. Let's not do that. Mmm. Ah. Woo! It's got a little kick. Those are the ones that I want out of my little kit. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Basement jacks in my head all week. Interesting. I've been trying to put more music on around the house that's kind of vaguely danceable without being kind of offensive so that I can dance around the house a bit with Ivy. And it's been uh, fun going back to uh, old haunts. Like, um, I just realised I screwed that one in. It's not actually doing anything, but that's fine. Am I going to overclock? Not particularly. Uh, the, the memory will run at its rated speed of 3600 megahertz. I will be fixing the infinity fabric of the processor to run at 1800 megahertz. And uh, I'll make sure that the RAM voltage matches uh, the XMP profile. But that will largely be it. The reason that I'm using a quote unquote big ass Noctua cooler is that it's going to try or I'm going to try and have it run at its absolute minimum speed pretty much all the time for its entire life because I don't like having noise in the studio at all ever if I can help it or at least if I do have noise I want it to be something that I need to be aware of, like noise on a preamp channel or, you know, a noise coming from an amp that shouldn't be. You alright in there? Yeah. Okay. Liam's just digging around. Searching for treasure! Yeah, alright. It'll be in there somewhere. 80x 12 volt, click. All right, next up. We're nearly there now, and then we'll get to part three. The advantages of having a rack case. If you have a rack, like I have a rack, you can slide it in the rack. <laughs> That's about it. That is about it. <laughs> There's nothing special about a rack case, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's just that this nice console that I already happen to have has a rack on the bottom which means that I can slide this in, secure it, and then it's out of my way. It's out of footfall, it's slightly off the ground, it's actually got airflow from below as well. And it fits nicely in the system that I have. Also, if you have a lot of computers to build, you can have a rack case and you can stack them all up in a single rack quite safely, which keeps them all out of your way. Was this inspired by the rack mounted Mac Pro? No, uh, I've been going rack mounted for at least five years now, maybe six years. Uh, I've had this rack mount case a long, longer than Apple have had theirs. Uh, it just made logical sense for me. Uh, it's not the nicest case, but for me, it's very practical. There we go. Ow. So. Uh, that can go in there. Am I still going to work off the one terabyte NVMe? Yes. Is one terabyte enough? Yes. Um, one terabyte for an audio guy is a lot more than you think. 
even with when you consider things like audio libraries and that kind of thing, be honest with yourselves. How many projects are you going to be working on at any one time? This is not going to have make big Steam libraries installed. This is not going to have a lot of video work because it's not going to have any video work on. That's the idea anyway. Um, if this was a multi-purpose machine, one terabyte probably wouldn't be enough. There we go. It's a gigabyte something. Um, RX 570 gaming, eight gigabyte. Good shout, Eduardo. That is exactly what I ordered. I'm going to pop this. Drop the graphics card in where it should be so it gives a nice hearty shklunk. And going to get our PCI Express. Plug that into our power supply. Tuck some of that cable away because this case doesn't have any cable management uh, to speak of. It's not great for that. <laughs> but it's an 8-pin power supply, which again, you could run it off 6 pins, but it likes to have the extra pins to try and spread the current load. And boop, in we go. So what have we got here? We've got DVI, three display ports, and HDMI. Happy days. So I could actually run five screens off this. Um, Okay. So, my Amazon order has been dispatched. What have I ordered now? Oh God. Um, latency mon. Yes, latency mon I will be using in a little while. So, that, largely speaking, is the build. I say it's not the cleanest in terms of cables by necessity uh, because of the setup, but there are no moving drives in here at all. Um, in the future, if storage does become an issue, I will add another terabyte SATA SSD uh, because they're good value for money and I'm not going to need high access storage speed on any more than a terabyte, let's be honest. But it's time. It looks like it's time for phase three. Phase three is we put a lot of the building stuff away. The motherboard, by the way, is an ASUS Tough Gaming X570 Plus. The non-Wi-Fi edition, because I don't need Wi-Fi ever in here. At least not on the desktop machine. So, what we're gonna do is put all this nonsense away. And it's going to be time to change Leroy, the uh, close camera. Huh. All right. Let's get all this back in the box and deal with it in the morning. Uh, in the meantime, just tidying up a little bit, because I've got two computers now to turn on and test and do all that good stuff. If you work on servers, have you got any insights into free NAS bringing scalability by just adding single drives? Uh, that's not something that I have much experience with, to be quite honest. I did manage servers for quite a while, but I kind of got out of that. I got out of the whole game, as it were. And so I keep an eye on things like FreeNAS and Unraid, but I generally tend to have off-site uh, things like uh, Dropbox and Backblaze. And Liam's been working a lot with uh, Synology NAS boxes which have pre-configured setups and that kind of thing, which makes life easier. Because we're not, we're not doing enterprise grade stuff. Now, I think
think Liam's gone digging. We're not going to see him again for a week. There we go. Let's get this spun round. Uh, let's just see. Uh, if I go to... Can, does this work? Yeah, there we go. I did a thing. I changed the wide cam remotely. Right, so I've plugged in the motherboard. Uh, let's just grab a random keyboard and mouse. I found this mouse behind the vocal booth. Just to be fair. Don't know how it ended up there. <laughs> Underneath the carpet. Underneath the carpet? Well, there's like some rolls of carpet behind the vocal booth. Oh, right. Um, what is it? It's from a guitar, I'm guessing. I think... That might be the electronics out of my dad's old bass, the ones that broke. <laughs> so what you get in our studio, random bits of guitar. Oh, Weird. It? Yeah. Random guitar electronics in a carrier bag. <laughs> like you do. So, uh, it's one for the cell counter. Um, it's time now to turn this on and install everybody's favourite operating system. You know the one. Linux? Yeah. Ubuntu 19.04. Um, there we go. Yeah, I'm going to have to migrate everything off the uh, server onto a new class, but plus the class apparently mm. it will work. Okay, well that's not the end of the world, I guess. Yeah. Right. Oh, one thing I missed, I didn't actually screw in that. Oh, and I didn't even put in the RME uh, graphics card. What a complete numbskull. Well, I've still got this box of screws anyway, and this box of screws has got thumb screws in it. So I can thumb screw the graphics card down. Okay, where did I get the case? eBay! Seriously, I just literally went on eBay and went four unit rack case. That's a reasonable price, I'll have that one. Because I wasn't looking for anything particularly special. I don't think there are any big name brands in rack cases. So I just kind of went, yeah, that one looks about right, I guess. That'll do, click. Everything else that I've bought for the studio computers has been from a UK vendor called Scan. Scan are great, generally. Okay, these thumb screws may actually be too big. Too thick. It's too thick. I've dropped all my screwdrivers in here because I'm an idiot. Oh, did I? No, I didn't. I'm a double idiot. That's like a real idiot. Okay. Graphics card in. Before we go any further, let's rescue our uh, audio card. Audio card's still worth more than the processor. Uh, let's do it one by one. Because I also have the, uh, the option board here for uh, the thing with the stuff. There we go. Okay, 
just mount these one by one. So mounting these is fairly important uh, just because you end up pushing a lot of ADAC cables into the back of this. And doing all this setup whilst this computer's never been turned on, which means the capacitors have zero charge, is far safer than doing it later. There we go, there's there's the big one. screw would have been making the job easier yeah unfortunately this case the uh, the holes at the back are slightly worn out at this point so I'm just gonna have to, I'm going in full bore with the old lean in and make yourself a new thread approach do not try this at home guys but your case is probably not quite as shredded at the back as mine is And last but not least, the time code option. There we go. Oh, we've been live for three and a half hours at this point. I've not even started on the uh, OS stuff yet. There we go. Anything self tapping if you lean in hard enough. <laughs> I thought it looked a bit empty in there. So that goes in there. Uh, that way around. Try to do that neatly without getting it into the uh, GPU fan. Mm -hmm. There we go. Ribbon cables are great until they're not. All right, and they can all tuck down that side. There we go, that is the finished build, which is a bit more busy looking than it was. <laughs> now, on. Now for the big question. Ooh, blue light. We have RGB, guys. It means I know the power supply works. Yeah, now let's low battery on this camera. Ah, it should keep running. Okay. Uh, it's mostly powered off the USB anyway. Worst case, we can just leave it turn off, turned off for a little bit, and it'll charge up enough. We always move this camera back. Yeah. I mean, once this is on, it'll mostly be focusing on that screen anyway. So let's press the button. Fans move. Now, let's just say the PC builder's prayer. Please post. Helps when you plug in a cable. You absolute idiot. Ah, there we go. UEFI BIOS, guys. Um, what are you focusing in over there? <laughs> it's on this one. Yeah. Yeah, motherboard temperature 19 degrees. We did it! Victory sip indeed. Cheers, everybody at home. We, we got ourselves a studio machine. Now to do the things with it that make it nice. So yeah, 600 RPM with the fan, like I was saying. I wasn't even kidding around, that's pretty much perfect. So. There you go, Inception stream. Blah, <laughs> you can see the stream streaming while we stream. So, um, Ryzen 3900 XT 12 core processor, speed 3800 megahertz. 
32 gigabytes of RAM, currently running at DDR4 2666. We can make that go faster. Uh, Q fan control. I almost can't hear that fan with my head next to it. I'm impressed. That fan's on. Huh. That's great. All right, uh, so next thing to do, I have a, a Uzba stick over here. Uh, boot menu. Can't find any bootable devices. That's to be under that's understandable. Uh, can they see the screen? Uh, I can. Because that's that's what I was thinking is actually like capture. Oh yeah, you actually that, want yeah. to put the screen close. Please, yeah. Because hmm? that's fr from here on out. That's that's half the stream. Yeah. They can see the screen. But kind of you want to see your face. Uh, stream. So um, so what what we've got in here? Monitor. Fans ramping up a little bit. There you go. Then. Boot configuration. No face. Right. So it tells me all about the RAM. What I want to see is storage. Anyway, I have this USB stick. So the USB stick has Windows 10, the latest version. Uh, so what I'm going to do first is uh, NVMe configuration. There it is, Samsung 970 Evo 1 terabyte. That's on there, so I'm going to just jam this USB 3 uh, drive in there, uh, save changes and reset. And yeah, so we're quickly going to get Windows 10 installed here, uh, just so that from there on out, uh, if we overclock things and it won't boot into Windows, we know that because trying to install Windows on a, a slightly broken system is just asking for trouble. Ah, there we go. Uh, we're not in the US, we're in the United Kingdom of the Great Britons. Oh, that's my only choice. Well, as long as the time, currency and keyboard are UK, that's fine. Install now. That should go fairly fast because it's off a USB 3 drive. Oh, I'll uh, do that later. Uh, Windows 10 Pro. Accept license terms. Uh, custom install Windows only to there. Yes, go. And just watch the fireworks. So. Let's have a look at how everybody's doing in the chat. Yes, yeah, so what kind of sound card? That was an RME HDSPE RAIDAT, which is only an interface. It's not converters, it's not preamps. Preamps and conversion are all in the rack behind me. Liam's having fun with grading. Uh, isn't the voltage supposed to be... Don't worry about what the vol voltage is. Uh, this is something that I saw Kingpin, one of the world's foremost overclockers, talking about. Uh, he talked about uh, voltages being two things. One called one that he called the set and one that he called the get. If you, if you set it to run at 1.3 volts, it will display 1.48, like you were saying. Um, so... A lot of overclockers will talk about the voltage that they set at. They don't often talk about the voltage that actually reports back to them. In reality, with AMD, they are slightly different reported values, so don't don't worry about it. That's the long and short of it. I think it installed. I think it's restarting for the next stage of installation. I've dropped the um, ISO down because 
and there's, there's no information on it. Oh, is it just too, blown out? It's too blown out. Okay. So, if you need to go back to it over there, you need to remember. There you go, it looks better now. Actually, see it. Do I have a mid video about mixing in Reaper? Someone just asked in chat. <laughs> oh boy, have we got the channel for you. Um, feel free to have a look around the channel uh, because we have many, 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 many videos about Reaper. <laughs> and lots of videos about mixing. And all the videos about mixing for me are in Reaper. And also a course on ProMix Academy. <laughs> mm. If you want to do an ultimate deep dive, we have the ultimate Reaper course which is now available through Pro Mix Academy, which is Warren Hewitt from Produce Like a Pro's platform. So, yes, check that And people out. say it is good. Mmm. That's what we hear. No sound blaster card. Yes. RME's going to go away soon. We'll bring back the sound blaster. Yeah. This is not to Windows 7. No, this is the latest Windows 10. Yeah, we could take this this nice appropriate time to uh, click the like button whilst we watch more Windows installation screens. Mm. <laughs> I put their logo on the window screen. It's quite common now. Yeah. It used to be way more common years ago. When it was customising, yeah. Yeah, I remember, you remember everyone was like... When you used to customise your sounds, customise everything. Is that the right keyboard layout? Oh, United Kingdom, I told you this. On install, what are you doing? No, I don't want to add a second keyboard layout. Uh, let's just say I don't have internet. Uh, <laughs> no, no. And no. Don't need any of that crap. Yeah. You must get online to get these new features. What, you mean all the stuff I don't want? No, I'm good. One of the first things I'm going to run when this is connected to the internet tomorrow is a script called Windows 10 Debloat, which I've discovered, which gets rid of a lot of the inbuilt crap. Like what? Like Candy Crush and Cortana, I think, and a lot of just stuff that I'll never use. Mm. Mm. I had to find a way to get rid of Feedback Hub properly the other day because it keeps running randomly whilst I'm gaming mm. and just j j using 40% of the CPU on an i7 9750. It's like, seriously, what are you doing? Who's going to use this studio? Create a super memorable password. Let's turn the camera away for a second. Penguin. Enter. Confirm your password. Penguin. Enter. Give you a clue. It's not penguin. <laughs> Why do I have to create three security questions? There we go. Uh, don't use online speech recognition. Don't use location. Don't find my device. Don't send them diagnostics. Oh, I definitely don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Why are these all now separate pages? No. No. Probably and... regulations to try and stop you from skipping it. Yeah. So you actually see it. Is it Psychoplasm 666? <laughs> sure, why not? Uh, yeah, Marty, if you if you have a link for Windows 10 Debloat, do drop that in the chat for me, because that would be appreciated. Uh, how many cores and threads will Reaper utilise or recognise? Uh, as of Reaper 6, uh, Reaper 6 will uh, work with 64 cores and 128 threads. I kid you not. They completely upgraded the code for serious multi-threading. So, no matter what you want to throw at it, Reaper will handle it. There we go. It's not Penguin, it's Tux. Yeah.
200 mixes and let that Adam will do a live mix on Pro Tools. I mean, I could. Be a bit of a struggle, but I could. All right, we're on. So, uh, let's have a look on this installer qu uh, drive quickly. Because there's a couple of things on here that I wanted to get on right away. Uh, and then we'll go back to overclocking. So one of the things I wanted to get on straight away was the AMD graphics drivers. Uh, which were specifically the Radeon Pro, not the gaming drivers. The actual like professional, uh, like the creator content creator drivers. Not entirely sure what the difference is, but I wanted to get that on there as soon as possible. Taking its sweet time. But let's let's just look at Task Manager for a minute. Uh, and just be very, very happy with uh, change graph to logical per oh look at that. Look at that graph. Look at this graph! <laughs> AMD, why, why, why are you making it look really pretty when you've not installed the driver yet? Additional options, no, don't need any of that. Yep, so Radeon Pro software, you know it's pro because it's blue. So, huh? So how many cores have you got? Huh? How many cores are there? 12 and 24 threads. Wow. 12 core with hyper-threading, well, SMT as they call it. Wow. It's a lot. How much did this cost? Lots. Oh, that made me go bro. Right. Uh, finish. Yeah, um, the processor was 500 quid, but the 3900X non-XT is 400 quid. Mm -hmm. Much more affordable. <laughs> uh, so 500 quid for the processor, how much in the motherboard? About 150. Okay, and, and then this is a graphics card on top of Not that expensive. Run. No, not really, but once once all said and done, because I bought the case and the Blackmagic capture card was extra. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it, it, it's really not an unreasonable amount of money. But yeah, I'm going to shut this down now, turn it back on, and look at more tech stuff. So, oh, um... Hmm. There we go. So DOCP is AMD's version. Profile number one. Please disable your net BIOS immediately. What? Marty says please disable your net BIOS immediately. What's that? I don't know. I'll read up on that. Okay. Right. So memory clock to F clock, which is probably... Uh, is Marty working? Networking? Yeah. Marty, I need to talk to you. I'll message you on Discord. Right, so that's <laughs> DOCP DDR4 3297. Does actually say 1.35 volts, which is good because apparently a lot of the time these motherboards don't actually. Well, it's time to hit F7, and a lot of the, the time these motherboards apparently don't actually change the voltage. So, CPU configuration. Uh, don't want to change any of this uh, although I could uh, turn off SMT at some point I'm going to experiment with hyper threading for uh, Reaper and see how it affects it in this kind of uh, this kind of thing so F clock frequency infinity fabric is going to be 1800 megahertz exactly uh, yeah uh, CPU core ratio auto. 
Um, look, yep, voltage is going up to 1.35 for the RAM. And so that's all I'm going to do on here. I'm going to save changes and reset. So that's going to make the RAM go a lot faster. Well, you say hyperthreading should improve Reaper by a lot, but on a 12 core, 24 thread machine, will it? Hyperthreading isn't great for audio. Uh, hyperthreading is great for things where you've got a little bit of extra process time. Okay, so how's my RAM running right now? Mm. Looks fine, looks good. All right. Save and exit. And off we, off we go. Oh, um, yeah, NetBIOS is in networking. No, I, I, I remember that now, yeah. Show them the screen, please. They can't see the screen. Well, they can, they just can't see it close. There you go. Everybody happy now? Pretty trees. Let's see if this camera's not liking it, that's the problem. Though. I can see it's either too dark or too bright. Ah, dynamic range! Right, so we have a performance mem. So, virtualization disabled, memory is running at 3600 megahertz, happy days, and CPU is barely even breaking a sweat. Lovely, let's install some stuff to really test it. So, what have I got? Um, oh, next thing is, I'm going to put things in the documents file and I know that's bad but we've not installed anything yet so I'm going to install the drivers for the RME card uh, just because then I, I like to have all the drivers installed for everything in the system before I stress it so that we know that everything's actually on when we stress test it in which case if anything's going to crash it's going to crash in a system setup that I already, you know, you know, it's like it's right at that point. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm explaining myself slightly poorly there, but I think you get the idea. Uh, so that's now installed, which means if I go to device test environment for which you're going to use the computer in. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's that's absolutely right. So, PCI device. Oh right. So I need to. SM bus controller. I need to install some motherboard drivers at some point then. That's fine. I'll do that in a little bit. But for now, with everything cranked, where was it? Um, sounds like a simple on there. Cinebench. It's just going to have to be Cinebench for now because I'm not connected to the internet. But I do have... No, it's not a high DPI panel. Uh, I do have blah, 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 um, a full copy of 3D Mark now. It was three pounds on Steam, so I thought, why not? Because it used to be thirty-five quid for 3D Mark, and I thought I'm not paying that to Benchmark, but for three pounds, I can do that. Ooh. Yeah, BIOS update can wait. Everything can wait. This isn't connected to the network. So I've got um I've got a full copy of Ada sixty four as well. I really like that program. Oh yeah, Ada, Ada, um, yeah. Because you can stress test everything and set it to max performance, so it runs your, your CPU, your GPU, and everything at full. Right. It forces everything to full, mm. so you can check for um, thermal thro throttling and stuff. Yeah. It's the only tool I found out there that was able to actually stress test my laptop properly. Cause mm. I was getting throttling issues. Okay, so let's hit run on Cinebench R20. Watch it melt. Or not melt. Look at that speed.
That's R20. That's the new Cinebench. The newer, more difficult Cinebench. And it's just kind of going, yeah, whatever. That's pretty good. Now there's there's a measure in there which is the 16 core thread ripper. The old 1950X has 6,670 as its number. Let's see what we get. 7,225. We are handily beating the first generation of thread ripper with a desktop part. Handily beating it. That's great. So that wasn't using the graphics, that was using the CPU? That was entirely using the CPU. Right. But it, um, ray tracing, it's classic ray tracing where it uses the CPU to do little cubes. And yeah, that was yeah entirely CPU bound. And it still did it in that speed. <laughs> Sweet. That's very impressive. And yeah, all the noise I can hear in this room is coming from the streaming laptop mm -hmm. now. It is loud. And I'm sat next to this thing. But yeah, um, I am going to have to do more testing after the stream then. But yeah, it's good to know that I can absolutely crank that. And it doesn't even complain. It doesn't care. Just kind of gets on with it. So I think that's probably a good time to end this stream. And I will try and do a follow-up video on performance uh, within the next couple of weeks because I've got a lot on this week. Marty, if you can check your DMs on Discord when you've got a minute, that'd be amazing. Oh, also, I will go to network settings and uh, change adapter options, properties. Doesn't even have NetBIOS. Maybe it's just not included anymore. NetBIOS hasn't been in there for a while, I'm sure of it. Anyway. Yes. Uh, cheers, everybody. Single core scores. Uh, I don't think Cinebench R20 does single core scores, but honestly, I don't care. Because single core... I don't do anything single core. As in, like... Some games or applications are really bound to a single course but performance. But doesn't Reaper send like, each channel to an individual core, so... Or, yeah. So we will be relevant, like, each core. Well, each core, but that's why you do a multi-core benchmark. Mm. Single core tests are designed to push the processor to its maximum speed whilst only using a single core. Mm. That's not an application that we, we're going to ever use it in. Mm. And that's why when people say, oh, Intel's better at single core performance, it's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, if you need that single core performance, you go do that. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Uh, if you're about to hit the X in the top of the stream to go somewhere else, spend half a second to hit the like button first and then close the stream. It's just literally a, a little, little flick of the wrist on the way down. That would be much appreciated. Yes. So thank you everybody for tuning in. I was kind of thinking I would do more of the, the testing stuff, but I'll have to do that another time because it's now occurred to me that not having this networked, I don't actually have a network cable that reaches here because the only one that reaches here is actually doing the stream for you guys right now. Ah. Yeah, ah. it's something that I'll have to do off the camera. But it's been a great stream it's been nearly four hours so i think it's time yeah. to uh say thank you everybody and good night and we'll see you all wait you can say bye properly there you go <laughs> oh no no i'm the one on the right oh yeah <laughs> i switched the camera all oh, right that's why i was confused ah <laughs> motherfucker i can switch the camera from here if i want to <laughs> don't give him the power guys <laughs> take it away five manuals red yeah disappointed my man card is officially revoked. Yep. But it all worked first time. Mm hmm. So, so there you go, guys. You need to read five manuals when you install a computer, otherwise, it will fail. Mm. That's the benchmark. That's the benchmark right there. That's exactly <laughs> how it works, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, guys. I'll see you Bye. in the next video. Goodbye.
Bye. I can't reach. Bye. <laughs> um, victory.